good morning everyone and welcome to this one day national webinar emerging trends in artificial intelligence initiated as a part of capacity building program for students and professionals in an online mode under ages of rusa digital life is augmenting human capacity and disrupting eons old human activities code driven systems have spread to more than half of the world's inhabitants in ambient information and connectivity thereby offering previously unimagined opportunities and unprecedented threats i quote our intelligence is what makes us human and artificial intelligence is an extension of that quality unquote these are the famous words of jan lucen professor new york university yes today artificial intelligence is impacting the future of virtually every industry and every human being artificial intelligence has acted as the main driver of emerging technologies like big data robotics and internet of things and it will continue to act as a technological innovator for the foreseeable future keeping this in mind Gujarat Research Society's Hansraj Jivandas College of Education has organized this <laughs> webinar, and we have with us two famous resource person, Dr. Harish and Dr. Rupa, to enlighten us more about artificial intelligence. I now request our principal, Madam, to kindly address the gathering. Over to you, Madam. Thank you, Dr. Benerji. Good morning. A warm welcome to all the national webinar on emerging trends in artificial intelligence, organized by Gujarat Research Society's Ansar Jindas College of Education, Autonomous. I had great pleasure in extending a very warm welcome to our distinguished resource person, Dr. B. S. Harish and Dr. T. K. Rupa. JSS Science and Technology University Mysore we are very pleased to welcome teachers students and professionals who have joined us from mumbai and from different places across the nation elon musk has said that artificial intelligence will soon become just as smart as humans and when it does we should be scared because humanity's very existence will be at stake these words paint a very negative picture before us about artificial intelligence but we are also aware that artificial intelligence has extended its frontier in technology and knowledge and gained a lot of importance in recent times in simple terms artificial intelligence means trying to make computers think like human and mimic their actions the scope of artificial intelligence is very wide and the application of its technologies are intended to reduce human efforts as much as possible and make our lives easier we find its application in every field of life like medical sciences air transport agriculture banking financial institution gaming entertainment as well as education artificial intelligence is intelligence demonstrated by machines while the natural intelligence is displayed by humans and animals and that involves consciousness and empathy if used responsibly artificial intelligence can truly benefit society with the objective of having a clearer picture on the theme of artificial intelligence its emerging trends and its impact on human life 
Gujarat Research Society's Hansara Jivan Das College of Education has taken the opportunity to invite two expert and learned resource person to deliberate on it and enlighten us. I once again extend a very warm welcome to each one of you to the national webinar on emerging trends in artificial intelligence. Thank you very much. And again, welcome to you for joining us. Over to you, Dr. Banerjee. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for those welcoming address and words of wisdom shared to our audience. Now I request our IQSC coordinator, Dr. Usha Borkar, to kindly introduce our speaker for this session, Dr. C. K. Rupa, to the audience. Over to you, Dr. Borkar. Thank you, Dr. Banerjee. Once again, a warm good morning to one and all. I consider it my privilege to have received this opportunity to introduce to all of you our esteemed resource person, Dr. C. K. Rupa Ma'am. Rupa Ma'am has a long association with the Department of Information Science and Engineering, JSS Science and Technology University, Mysore. Madam has to her credit a BE in Information Science and Engineering, MTech in Computer Science and Engineering, and PhD in Computer Science from University of Mysore. In February 2020, Madam was awarded first prize in Ideathon on Social Innovation conducted by Confederation of Indian Industry and Young Indians. Rupa Ma'am has several areas of research interests. To name a few, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and computational intelligence. Madam has written several articles which have been published in reputed international journals. Madam has to her credit uh, several international conferences and workshops that she has organized as well as attended. Madam has undertaken several significant professional responsibilities to name a few. She is working towards establishing MOU between JSS STU and Sri Jaya, Jaya Deva Institute of Cardiovascular Science and Research Mysore. Rupa Ma'am has also been identified as reviewer for several prestigious international journals. Ma'am has been resource person at several events organized by prestigious institutions all over the country. Currently, Madam has been identified as a coordinator of UG courses in information science and engineering. Rupa Ma'am, we are indeed honored by your presence and I'm sure all of us will be tremendously benefited by your knowledge and expertise. Once again, on behalf of our parent body, Gujarat Research Society, our principal madam, Dr. Anita Swami, my faculty colleagues, and the participants from all over the country, I extend a warm welcome to you, ma'am. I request you to commence with your session on emerging trends in artificial intelligence. Over to you, Rupa, ma'am. Thank you, Professor Usha. It was actually a cute introduction about me. Uh, I thank the principal Anita Swami for conducting such an uh, emerging trend of artificial intelligence webinar type. And all the organizer team, especially Shreema Banerjee Madam, who had kept a constant uh, touch with uh, both of uh, me as well as with Harish sir, and uh, she organized it. Uh, yes, as Usha Madam said, myself Rupa CK. So before starting the session, I came to know from the organizers that uh, it is a heterogeneous group of uh, audience. Like there are some students, some faculties are there, and there are a few uh, from different backgrounds, different academics. So I'll keep my presentation uh, more general format so that everyone can understand. I'm not going in depth of any technical things. A layman can understand in that way I'm presenting it. So further, uh, we'll, let's start the session. Just I'll share my screen. Uh, 
Shimavan, if you confirm me the screen is visible yes. and audible. Yes, it is visible. It's audible. You can move on to the next slide, please. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Uh, fine. So, uh, as we all know that uh, I'll be starting this session covering all the basic concepts of artificial intelligence or the basic concepts which comes under the umbrella of artificial intelligence. As all the participants here and all the faculties over here uh, know that uh, it is most amazing and buzzwords nowadays. Artificial intelligence is most commonly used. It is nothing but, as the principal said, it is nothing but the intelligent inserted to the machine. It is an artificial intelligence is nothing but an, an intelligent exhibited by a machine. And it has been a, a extended everywhere nowadays. It has been used everywhere. So let's start the session. Uh, so first we'll go with uh, human intelligence and artificial. What is the difference between human intelligence and artificial intelligence first? So what is this human intelligence? So we humans are extraordinary, actually. We think out of the box and we roam bitter corner of the world. We are, play, we are placed in moons, planets, everywhere. Uh, we are everywhere. We communicate with the people with any language. Even if we don't know the language, we somehow mimic it and we communicate with the people. We are able, as soon as we see something, we, we are able to recognize that pattern or something. We remember some past incidents and take some decision. We remember a few things about some person and talk how to talk to them, how not to talk to them. Based on that, we remember a few things and we discuss to them. And also we are very adaptable. This is the intelligence of human where they can adapt to any situation. If I'm staying in Mysore, I, I'm comfortable here. Even if I come from Mumbai there, first initial days I may face problem, but I get adapted to Mumbai also. So this is the intelligence of human. So then what is the, when everything is there, when we have reached the planet, other planet, so we can communicate get to the people we are having everything then what is the need of human artificial intelligence when human is so intelligent what is the need of artificial things so intelligence is needed because for example if the human uh he may be biased sometimes by taking the decision he may be biased for example if i have good opinion about one person and not so good opinion on the other person we the decision will be biased. If you see, even our students will say, you have given marks to them, you have not given marks to me or something like that. Coming to our children itself, you praise them, you don't. That all happens in human intelligence. That is never happens in the machine intelligence. This is especially needed in medical data. Medical data, the accuracy which is given by the machine intelligence is far better than human intelligence. Because as a human, it is a trend to make some error. Okay. So because of huge data, because of minute information, the doctor should take into account and make some decision. Uh, that is, uh, as a human, as I said, it, there are some errors will be occurring. So the machine will never do that error. It will be more accurate once it has been trained properly. And it will give you very fast results. It gives the very fast results when compared to the human intelligence. So medical field, as I said, it is life and death procedure. So fast time matters a lot. And also, not only like not only human interact, nowadays machine has also talk, started interacting by the concept called as a natural language processing. And machines always learn from their mistake, which is sometimes not possible by the humans. Uh, we don't learn from our mistake, we keep on doing the same mistake. But the machine, if the mistake is done, it learns from the mistake. It corrects from this mistake, and the same mistake won't be repeated from the machine. And it learns from the data and it automates itself. Whatever the data it is getting, it learns repetitively. It learns repetitively. So these are the things, difference between human intelligence and the artificial intelligence. For the consistent, unbiased result, if you want, and accurate and fast results, if you want, then go for the artificial intelligence. This is why we need artificial intelligence. So, so what is artificial intelligence? Imagine your life. As soon as you woke up in the morning, a robot comes with a customized coffee to you, to all the family members. Someone like may like black coffee, someone may like tea, someone may like espresso, someone may like cappuccino. Robot keeps the uh, track of all the your information of which tea you like. They get it ready as soon as you wake up. Imagine the life. So if early morning, if you are getting a cup of coffee with a fresh coffee, 
old air goes well. That is what I believe. So this is a product of an artificial intelligence. That is a robot. Robot is a product of an artificial intelligence. Imagine for uh, arranging a cupboard, arranging the cupboard according to our intention, like all the dresses in one pattern or something like that, if the robot does for us. Imagine that. So that is a product of an AI, artificial intelligence. So why artificial intelligence? What is this artificial intelligence? Robot is a product of artificial intelligence. So what is this artificial world? Why is this called as an artificial intelligence? Because a machine, a machine is been inserted with intelligence, human intelligence through some algorithms and some mathematical function. We write some algorithms, complex algorithms, some mathematical equation and insert the human-like intelligence inside the machine. Artificially, we are inserting the intelligence. Okay. So the products, when we insert the intelligence, these are the products which come. So not only this, there are many uh, products, many applications which Harisar will be continuing on that. For example, in a mobile phone, self-driving cars, social media, bank, surveillance, or anything in education also, in video games, everything. All these are the products of art artificial intelligence. Okay. So we'll go to the core of artificial. This is the basic introduction to the artificial intelligence. So what is artificial intelligence? Introducing intelligence to the machine. So uh, when a product, when do we say that this product is an artificial intelligence product? What does that machine do actually? So to say that it is an artificial intelligent product. So for example, consider a machine. I'll take a robot as an example. It need not be robot, it can be anything as I showed in the previous uh, uh, slides. I will be taking example as a robot now. A machine has been ready in an artificial intelligence lab and it has been put into the field now. Uh, that is for the real time application. So when I put that machine to the real time, uh, despite of variation of light, landscape, dimensions and all, this robot should work as expected. It, whatever it has been trained to do, it should do. In any variation of light, any of the landscape, it should work as it is. As it has been programmed to work, it should work. The ability to react appropriately in the situation, in the new situation, the ability to react in the new situation appropriately we call it as a generalized learning. We call it as a generalized learning. Okay. So one thing is generalized learning. Next comes with, now the robot is in other place where it has two paths. One is rocky path, the other one is paved path. So it should determine which path to take, depending on the circumstances, which path to take, and it should proceed. This intelligence or this factor, we call it as a, this portrays the, concept called as a reasoning okay you should take the reason why should i go here or why should i you should have some reason for that and it should move second thing is reasoning next comes uh, now the robot is in the stream it should pass the stream but it can't swim so it takes the input that is as a plank and keep that and cross the stream this is nothing but a problem solving using the input a capacity of problem solved. It was a problem for him to uh, pass the stream. So it has been solved by keeping the given input. What is the plank was given to it? It kept there and it crossed. So it is the ability to problem solving. So these are the three things. General learning, that is in any situation, if it is trained in uh, Mumbai and if it is placed in Mysore, it should work. Any situation, any new situation should work. Reasoning, quote the reason and uh, uh, take the decision and pro it should solve the problem. If these three things are there in that particular machine, we call it as an artificial intelligent machine. We call this as an artificial. So in, in, short, in short, if I say adapting to the situation, give the reason and solving the problem, then this machine we call it as an artificial intelligent machine. So we'll go with the definition and uh, uh, types of artificial. This types of artificial intelligence. So uh, this is a technical definition of uh, artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is nothing but uh, we build the machine, we build an intelligent machine. This is nothing but an intelligent machine by vast volume of data, by vast volume of data, the data has been given to the input and this system 
will learn the system will learn from the algorithms past experience from the data and it learns and it prepares a model and it prepares a system input is the data it uses the algorithms it uses the learning data and all and then product is been as an output why it is done as i said it is uh, done in order to enhance the speed precision and also effectiveness of the human effort so the machine is been designed here so this is an actual ai is a science of building intelligence machine from large volume of data and learning from the experience to perform human like task but human like task will be more efficient more precise more accurate when this machine does okay uh, all alone it can't do artificial intelligence as a subset of machine learning and deep learning artificial intelligence a product uh, a system a robot or a surveillance camera or any or a mobile is not possible only from this artificial intelligence it should take the help of it can be machine learning or it can be deep learning so these two are the subsets of artificial intelligence so uh, before going for what is machine learning what is deep learning we have different types of intellect, uh, artificial intelligence so different types of art artificial intelligence is we categorize artificial intelligence based on two things one is capabilities one is functionalities based on these two things we differentiate it so based on capabilities we have narrow artificial intelligence general artificial intelligence and super artificial intelligence based on functionality we have four divisions reactive machine limited memory theory of mind and self awareness these are the things so now we'll uh, elaborate more on based on capabilities that is narrow ai the corner slide shows about the narrow ai we call this narrow ai as a weak ai weak artificial intelligence because it performs only single task it doesn't perform beyond that but whatever that task it has been trained only for that it will be performing beyond that limitation it doesn't work for example uh, if i go with an uh, day to day example if you have an echo in your machine in your at home or alexa at your home if you can ask her like sing uh, uh, play the song of so and so tell me the news of so and so it will do everything we feel okay it has everything no but if you ask the alexa about the traffic in mumbai it doesn't say traffic in that particular area of the same city it doesn't say because it is not trained for that it is only trained for one particular things so we, those kind of things we call it as a weak ai that which focuses on one particular task beyond that it don't work so we call it as a narrow or weak artificial intelligence few example of it are nothing but face recognition like your biometrics if you have that is an artificial uh, uh, weak or narrow ai google translation uh, is also in weak ai so we'll go with the next one general artificial intelligence this is where the major work is going on this is where the huge funding is been raised and everyone majority of the researchers are working on this still uh, majority of the strong ai has come out but still it is not uh, completely done what is this it is able to understand and also learn from what all the intellectual task a human can do all the intellectual task a human can do the machine is also able to do all the intellectual task it can mimic few things also so for example if i say here uh, uh, general ai if you see the movie avengers the fictions in the fiction whatever the robots you have seen there those are called as a general ai okay uh, next coming to the super ai this is actually an hypothetical one still it doesn't exist actually uh, this machine is in still in paperwork it says that it it performs the intelligence or it performs the task better than human better than human but still it has not been arrived uh, but work is going on but major work is always on general ai because it is almost similar to the task of what human do so this is based on the capabilities now we'll go with the based on functionalities based on functionalities these are the four categories okay we elaborate on this so what is reactive machine reactive machine exa first i'll quote the example your washing machine is in 
uh, reactive artificial intelligence machine. So why is it called? Because it doesn't remember the past data. It doesn't learn from the past data. It thinks it works at the present data, whatever it is there based on that it works. So as soon as you put some plots to wash, takes its duties to wash. That's all. It doesn't remember this was washed 10 days ago. This was washed with Nirma. This was washed with that. So or something. it doesn't remember any of the past information. Its work is to clean the clock. It cleans. For example, playing a chess. Deep Blue is one of the uh, product of artificial intelligence which comes under the category called reactive machine. See, here the uh, chess just has so many moves, it can't remember all the moves, it, uh, it won't keep all the moves in the memory. It just op opponent what move you do, according to that, the reaction, according to that, the action is being done by the machine. So we call this as a reactive machine, reacting at the movement, at the present situation. So we call it as a reactive machine. Next comes the second category of based on functionality, that is limited memory. Limited memory that it learns from the past data and it takes decision from the past data, but the memory is for short lived. It doesn't keep it as a dictionary whenever and wherever it is required, don't use it. For that particular moment, for that two hours, for that three hours, or that one day, it keeps in memory, takes the information from there, and it reacts. This is called as limited memory. An uh, example for this is for self-driving car. What is the self-driving car here? Uh, the car yeah, keeps the uh, idea information of red to stop, green to move, or when to cross the lane, or when to overtake the other driver. That depends on that situation, but it should be having the information prior to that also. I can cross the lane, sixth lane, I can go to fifth lane. This information, this is an example of limited memory, taking the information from the limited uh, time based on that making decision and moving. Okay, that is called as a limited memory. Next comes the theory of mind. This uh, concept, like it understands people's all the emotions. When I see, when for example, there is Kismet and Sophia. I think majority of been have heard with Sophia. Kismet is MIT product. Sophia also, if uh, if you have seen in uh, news and all, it was very boom there. What are this? This is a theory of mind. What is what are they? They can mimic. At least they can, when they face to our face, for example, I'll go with Sophia only. Sophia eyes, this is Sophia. So this eyes is being put with a camera. And when it comes to in our face, it will take the picture of our face, analyze it, and it will say, okay, she's sad. Analyze, she's happy. She is enjoying some information. This will give. This is an example of theory of mind. Kismet is also the same thing. Uh, it can understand our emotions, sentiments, thoughts, what it is going on. But it is not possible for, uh, like, uh, it can't grab the attention. This two machine, it can't grab the attention. It can analyze one human face at a time. Multiple faces, it, was, it is not possible. So this is theory of mind. And the last one is self-awareness. In the self-awareness, uh, it is as, a, as super AI, it is also in a hypothetical one. It says it is superior than human. It is superior than human. That is, for example, if we understand stomach is paining or we have an headache, we have an eyesight or something like that, the machine will say that even it understands its own internal settings and all. It can exhibit all the emotion. That is uh, still, uh, it doesn't exist still actually. It can understand its internal traits, states, condition, everything as we can do. A machine can also do, which is not that existed, but that comes under the category called as self-awareness. So these are the categories of the artificial intelligence. As I said before, artificial intelligence all alone, these things can be done with the help of some tools. That is nothing but the machine learning and deep learning. So what is this machine learning? What is this deep learning all about in order to do all these things? The products like robot, it can be there, or self-driving car, it can be there. How is it possible? It is possible with the help of this machine learning and deep learning. So we'll go in depth of, uh, at the basics of uh, machine learning and deep learning. So how do we learn? We learn from past experience, okay?
initially we don't know to like we started uh, sounding like some words then sentences then we started communicating so we learn from our past what about the machine how do they what are the instruction given to the machine the machine will execute that instruction and it learns from that so these are the two things of learning learn from the past or learn from the instruction given by the human what if what if human trains the machine trains the machine in order to do the work of human in order to do the work of human more efficiently and more fast so machine learning is training a machine training a machine as human whatever the human learns for example i'll go with a simple example here uh, suppose the person's fault is that he likes uh, listening to songs okay uh, how do i say he likes this song or he decides i like this song i don't like this song he decides on what basis he it is decided on he decides on the tempo of the music the gender of the music intensity of the music and gender of the voice based on these things he decides okay i like this kind of music okay so when for example let uh, take the two categories light music and soaring music relaxed music and fast music so for uh, x axis has with relaxed fast y axis with light and soaring music so whenever whatever the song he has heard if we plot in this graph we come to know number of words is for see how many words are here this is nothing but 4 5 6 7 words for this here only uh, four songs are there here seven songs are there what i understand that he like this kind of music because he is listening more so what kind of music is that fast soaring music he likes okay i understood that so when i give uh, when i when the person asks me what kind of uh, music paul uh, likes so for example song a uh, if some person is asking me will paul like this fast tempo and soaring intensity so where that fast tempo and soaring intensity come fast tempo and soaring intensity where that is the song i'll say yes yes he likes it because i have i've learned from the past data i've seen that this is the person who is liking more of this kind of song so whenever some person asks me what kind of a song if with this to, yes yes he likes if uh, other person come and ask what if the tempo is uh, medium and intensity is also medium intensity is also tempo will the uh, paul like this song now it is tough for me to understand right Uh, for me it is not uh, i can, I, i get confused whether he likes that music or not this is where the machine uh, roles starts machine can easily identify it how will how will the machine identify it for example it make use of an algorithm draw a circle th- taking this as an song taking center point of this it draw a circle over here one of the algorithm for that which is been used is another thing but k nearest neighbor algorithm that will see uh, i mean that is more of technical terms this is how the circle is drawn using this algorithm now look at this circle when i look at this more it is the b is more it is tending more towards the liking things because it is four here it is only one so the machine says yes paul likes song b2 but we as a human was not able to do that we were in slightly confusion but machine does this okay if only thing only song example we need one ex- uh, algorithm but what if data are more complex of this kind uh, how the machine learns if the when the data input is of more complex we should see how machine will learn so machine will learn in three different ways one is supervised learning these are the types of machine learning okay this is supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning so we'll go with a supervised learning for example if you have three coins with you that is all are one rupee coin as soon as you look we human say okay this is uh, rupees the second one is euro the third one is dirham because we have seen uh, in past somewhere we have that intelligence we have that mem- in our memory and we are saying okay this is one rupee this is euro this is dirham but how will the machine say how will the machine identify it so machine will identify is this as a coin as by using the features 
What is this feature? It says this is one rupee if it is three grams. If it is, it is euro if it is seven grams. It is dirham if it is four grams. This is the feature of this coins. So inside the machine, I'll put the weight that is this grams and also put the currency label. So what I'm saying is here. So a machine, I'll put the information of feature that is weight and the name of. If it is three, it is one rupee. If it is uh, four grams or if it's seven gram, it is euro, it is dirham or something like that. So when the new coin insert gets inserted as an input for the machine, and I'll say what is the machine should say it is one rupee coin. How it is saying based on grams and based on the label it is been given. So we call this as supervised learning. Some feature is been given, some label is been given, and the machine will identify. This is called as a supervised learning. Second type of learning is unsupervised learning. What is this unsupervised learning? For example, uh, we have the information of a cricket score. Name of the person, score he has done, and the wicket he has taken. But, uh, so I should know, I should identify the um, person who is a batman, who is a who are our wicket man or a bowler. So on what basis the machine will do? If it is huge data, I can't keep on comparing the score with wicket, wicket with score and n number of people. It takes huge time for me as a human. So this can be done easily by the machine. What it does, it plots the information in x-axis and y-axis. Uh, x-axis says uh, how many wickets that person has taken and y-axis says how many runs it has taken. So whatever the information, Excel sheet or whatever the information we have, we plot it in this. So if you see here, there are few groups here. Many uh, are there who scored good scores, but not taken any, less wicket has been taken. And in here, this group is, they've taken many wickets, but runs are very less. The runs are very less, but they've taken the wickets. So what is the information we have got from here is that this group of people are nothing but batsmen. These people are nothing but bowlers. Because they have scored higher than batsmen, they have taken many wickets, bowlers. Unsupervised learning because this label was not given for me previously. Machine itself identified it. In supervised learning, the label was given one rupee if it is three gram, one uh, dirham if it is seven gram, one uh, euros if it is four gram. The label was given. In unsupervised learning, the label was not given. Even then, the machine identified it. These are the runners. This I uh, score of runners are nothing but the batsman. These are the wicket person. I mean to say bowlers. This is unsupervised. That is no label has been given. The last of machine learning is nothing but the reinforcement learning. This is more of award award based reward based learning or we can say feedback learning. For example, the input has been given to the machine and check what is this image given. It says cat. Then I'll say, no, no, it is not cat, it is dog. I'll give the information to the machine. No, it is not. Okay, the machine will learn. Okay, if these things are there, if the tail is big, if the it has four leg or something like that, I should say it as in dog. Again, if I put in give input, again, if it says bird or something like that, the buffalo, again, it's, I'll say, no, no, this is not buffalo, this is dog. Again, it learns, repetitive learning. Uh, it learns. And next time when I give the input as in dog, yes, it gives me the correct the machine gives me the correct result. So this is called as a reinforcement learning. So these are the different types of machine learning. Uh, if to generalize it, if the input is given, the machine will give, uh, run the algorithms, run the models. The models can be supervised model, unsupervised model, or reinforcement model. It runs in the system based on that the output is being given, based on that output is going. If the model is in reinforcement learning, feedback is being taken and the output is being given. So these are the properties of the machine learning. Whatever we just saw, these are the properties of machine learning. So uh, machine learning is very quick and accurate is very good and it gives better, it takes better decision and prediction. For example, it gets four times if I train the model giving the dog's image, when the fifth time, if I give as dog image, no need of training it. It immediately says, oh, four times I've seen this kind of image. This is dog, so this must be a dog. It gives me the result. It takes the decision. It, takes, it makes the prediction. That will be very accurate, and that will be very quick also. And 
machine learning as it is more powerful capacity human can't do as i said in the excel sheet if there are thousand of reports i can't compare and all say this is a bowler this is a batsman this machine can do and also those kind of data are huge data, large data as well as their complex data so it can be handled easily the complex data it can be there or the large data the machine learning will handle it very well it is not very uh, financially it is inexpensive so how is this machine learning possible because our deep learning is possible this is possible because nowadays everything see if you see in the previous also all the machine the input was required the data was required for that in order to get trained the model and tell the result so and the data is available freely nowadays because everything we are doing online it can be the transaction it can be the communication it, anything it may be it is online nowadays right so all the data is, is available for them when data is there uh, the machine is started thinking and they it making use of the uh, it's it, sorry it's not started thinking it is made to think so it, many data is there so it's and nowadays system uh, memory is not at all a problem we actually we human have a memory problem but machine huge memory very computationally high performance machine are available in the market so it is possible for this machine learning artificial intelligence deep learning and also uh, it is very uh, fast we are getting the information very fast so this machine learning is possible so as i said previously uh, ai as a subset of machine learning and deep learning so we have studied with machine learning machine learning is a concept where you are training the machine to understand what i am doing i am saying the machine this is the info take this information dog information this is take the uh, bowler's information take the runner information take the rupees information and classify it identify it that is how i am making the machine to analyze it and give the output so now we'll go with the next part of it that is deep learning next subset that is nothing but the deep learning so what exactly the deep learning is see this is the subset artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning what is this artificial intelligence it, it is nothing but it is able to uh, mimic the machine will be able to mimic the human behavior this is nothing but artificial intelligence whatever the human do that that machine should do everything the emotions it can be the not only task or the emotions decision everything a robot should do that is nothing but an artificial intelligence this is possible by the help of machine learning where few algorithm is been written and the model is been trained in order to achieve this intelligence in order to achieve this artificial intelligence machine learn has been used okay where the algorithm is been created now i'm talking about deep learning deep learning is been inspired from the the structure of human brain the structure of the human brain okay uh, the structure of human brain in the machine we call it as an artificial neural network this deep learning works on the concept of or it is a base foundation is been taken from the human brain okay this brain is what we we don't use human brain Uh, terminology in system this brain has been termed as an artificial neural network okay so this brain whatever it does this is the same work is done by this artificial neural network so we'll now go with this deep learning we'll go with what we'll dive into the concept of deep learning so the deep learning i have give the input as few tomatoes to few cherries okay it should classify or say that whenever the input is given okay this should go to the basket of cherry this should go to the basket of tomato in machine learning how will i do uh, i'll say if the size of the tem i'll give the feature information a feature information what is this feature information like the size of the tomato color of the tomato and the stem of the tomato information and feed into the machine so whenever it comes match to that and say okay this tomato if cherry is given match to that and it is a cherry that is how machine learning do but in deep learning it is not the case as soon as i give the information what we human do as soon as we see somehow in a background it will be calculated okay it is tomato how we will do 
we also think unconscious subconscious we think okay this is red color this is this side this is a plumpy so it is a demoto same way this deep learning uh, will also work the feature is not given to the machine here i want to train the model the model itself will take the information okay every time i don't open the book and read right uh, to say that it is a tomato somewhere it is been filled in my brain in my past thing same thing in deep learning also a feature is not been given by the programmer the feature is been selected by the machine itself stem size color of color size of the uh, tomato or cherry everything based on that it has been classified this is nothing but for example this is nothing but the uh, input layer we call this as an input layer followed by the last one is an output layer in between are the hidden layers in between are the hidden layers and how it works we'll see in simple example okay see for example nine neural network how it works a person when you give a kid to write a one two three or something like that everyone won't write the same nine is same thing okay we human one person may write nine this way this way or this way but all three are nine agree we human can identify this yes this is nine but how will the machine says in machine learning i would i had have told it if a straight line is there and to the left side it's a circle is there then it is nine when this input is being given to the uh, machine learning it will be a bit tough to understand that so whereas in neural network it takes the converts the input into the pixels each and every pixels okay what are the size of it like 28 to 28 takes the information bit of it like for example the information needed is 784 pixels is needed all is been put as an input everything is put as an input and we also give the output if something like this comes if everything match it is zero if everything match it is a two everything match if it is nine so in between these are the neurons how hidden layers similar to our brain works how our brain works the same thing this works this works with some weights bias and activation functions these are more technical terms this is how it match okay if it comes like uh, zero yes it can be a zero or it can be eight it can be nine so where is eight no two circle is not there go back again come one more circle it can be six map it no it can't be go back adjust the weight and come and ultimately say it is a nine so these are the neurons which are work as in uh, the hidden layers which works as in our brain so this is deep learning this is the concept of deep learning even the deep learning has touched everything almost it has covered the vast area now actually but it also has some limitations uh, coming to the limitations of deep learning is nothing but yeah. deep learning is not been trained by giving the features it has been trained by giving the inputs so we need large data we need huge vast volume of data sometimes it actually nowadays it is available so it is working but for one particular situation the data may be not in for example bank information if i want that we are avoiding nowadays because of uh, fraud things or something like that so that information will be very less so data is a problem and if we get the data also again it's a problem because normal cpu the system which we have we can't compute all the information using this huge data because the data which there in the online is an unstructured data it is not a structured data it is an unstructured data so huge volume or a computational process which is not possible in the normal computer so we need to go with an gpu graphical processing unit rather than cpu we need this gpus with high potentials of computational power one thing is that and the thing is since it is learning by its own if someone teaches uh, i can understand the concept very easily but i if i need to refer all the books by myself and study then it is time consuming okay so it is training by itself we need to give the all sort of inputs arrange it and give it that's all it learns by and arrange the architecture okay nine means this many things eight means this many things so it should learn by itself so it may be time consuming 
then it will take weeks, months together in order to get trained. So these are the three limitations being found by the deep learning. If these three are being considered or these three are taken care, deep learning is in almost every field. So properties of deep learning, the, as I said, it depends on the input data. As much as you get huge data, the model works better. Less data, not so good accurately, but if you have huge data, the model works best. You can better scalability. You can increase the scalability, you can decrease the scalability, depends on your application. And problem solved end to end method. End to end method in a sense, for example, as I said, nine, it, should, it takes from zero, slanting line, curve line, it goes, everything until nine has been finished, it won't stop. It won't go to six, it won't go to eight. It completes information, okay. All this kind of can be written nine. Different way we can write nine. So end to end method. And features, as I said, feature has been selected by the machine. Since the machine has been selecting by itself, it is the best feature it has been selected. And it's the subset of machine learning. It is the subset of machine learning. But for training, this kind of machine takes large time. I agree, agree that because huge data should be a lot. But testing is faster. Testing. When new data is being given to test, okay, what is this? It gives us the result very fast. So testing is less. These are the properties of deep learning. So whatever I we discussed, that is artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. So I'm taking a simple um, example, real world example, and explaining the concept here. So imagine I need to give the statistics to the government. So how many uh, cars, how many trucks, how many bikes, how many cycles are passed in this road in this six hours in order to uh, uh, so that a road has been constructed or some for some information, some other work. So as a human, what I should do, I should sit there for six hours. I should check each and everything. Okay, but I should take the count of it. Everything is a tedious job and Time, six hours is completely gone. What I'm doing, I'm making use of this help of machine learning. So I'll face, uh, place the camera there and I, in that camera, I'll take the information and put to the machine. The machine will be trained saying that, okay, if you get circle, uh, type, big tire type, and if you have a uh, headlight, then it's a car. If you have a pedal, if you have a handle, then it is a cycle. I'll give the information to the machine and fit it. As soon as the input comes, as soon as the images from the camera captured on the road comes to the model, from the model, it immediately says, okay, this is car, this is things, and it bifurcates. It in increments the counter, cycle 10, five truck, 30 bike, or something like that. It increments automatically by classifying it. Okay, this is machine learning. It automatically does it. It automatically does it by looking at what are the features I have given. So how does deep learning do? Deep learning, I should train this model before only giving huge unlabeled data. Your data is unlabeled, okay? I'll give whatever comes, see there are different types of cycle, different types of bikes, different types of trucks from the images taken from the web pages or some other pictures, your own database or open source data sets, all those can be inserted and you can check, okay, this is what? This, and then you, if you give the input to this machine, the machine, as I said, it works with the neurons. These are the hidden layers which were mapped to it. Okay, so cycle tire, yes. Then uh, it has an uh, uh, two headlight, no, come back. It is not in cycle. Then cycle tire and it has a pedal. Yes, it can be cycle. Next, cycle has a tire, pedal, and it has a single seat or something. Like yes, it is a bicycle. So end-to-end -end work, it works. And you say it is a uh, cycle and give the count for it. This is done uh, for in fraction of seconds. Uh, like if the information is given, I human should have sat for six hours there. But here, the picture has been given to the system. As soon as it has been given, immediately I'll get the result. So this is with respect to the working principle of machine learning and deep learning. So uh, as I said, machine learning has a subset of uh, sorry, 
artificial intelligence is has a subset of machine learning and deep learning now i'm explaining an example which consists of all three all three things are merged together how it is working consider in this example this is a library collection of books and written books and different languages books and different genre books different author books everything okay so converting this handwritten book because some will write the same sentence in different style and in different language it is different type and without knowing without reading that book without understanding the book translation is very tough okay digitization is very tough and it takes huge time so there i we make use of deep learning there the system make use of deep learning that is it translates the handwritten to the digital format it just understand how what is written how it is been written everything digitize it and keep it ready this is the physical books the book which is there in the library now it is there online in the online next i the robot has been sent to get some kind of textbook go get this textbook so this is artificial intelligence the robot is a product of it so robot should go to the library fetch that book and come back so for that we have machine learning for example this machine learning using the algorithms of machine learning it bifurcates using the text mining concepts which is a part which is a tool of machine learning actually which bifurcates okay this is a comic book this is a horror book or this is a philosophical book okay and it orders arranges in it gives the all the informations of that book so as soon as i order an inform uh, to the artificial is a product is a robot go get me this kind of book it should go there see the location given by this machine learning get it and give it to me that is nothing but the product of artificial learning. this all together is nothing an example of ai with machine learning and deep learning deep learning conversion it can be the machine learning grouping it can be the and artificial intelligence getting that book to me library still we go search for 2 3 minutes in that particular order there and take that book and come back but i'll sit here and say send the robot go get that book it will get with the help of all these things this is an example of uh, merging all the three techniques so this is nothing but i think i'm left with five more minutes i just summarize it so ai with machine learning and deep learning is nothing but a uh, deep learning is a subset of machine learning machine learning is indeed subset of artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is nothing but the mimicking the human intelligence or using the intelligence in order to perform the task as or similar to the human or better than human better than human has not yet come but uh, it performs the task almost same as how human being does better in the sense more accurate more fast yes but like better is not possible in the times of emotion sentiments and all it is not possible machine learning it has huge number of tools it has huge programs algorithms in order to predict and to make decisions next comes with deep learning deep learning is been inspired by the human brain which works uh, as our brain works it has been uh, it works with the neural network it works using the concept of neural network it make use of this tools available in machine learning also algorithm available in machine learning also it make use of it and uh, work as the our brain works this is all together artificial intelligence tool so uh, i'll this is a real time example i'm just showing to differentiate the artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning the rest of the application will be explained by uh, hari sir next so artificial uh, example of artificial intelligence in our day to day life is nothing but as i said echo sd google translators all those are examples of artificial intelligence for example uh, your smart home you sit here and you can switch off your uh, lights switch off your uh, fans artificial intelligence next comes with the machine learning machine i'm not elaborating on this because next section is come almost on this only so machine learning uh, where it is used in order to bifurcate whatever the input your uh, emails you are getting in the uh, inbox some will go for spam check whether it is spam or not there you can use the machine learning okay 
give or say whether it is uh, in real world example, many machine learning applications are there. Uh, for example, biometrics, which you are used in your colleges and all that. Attendance can be taken using machine learning in your colleges, taking, placing the photo camera there, taking the information of it, those things. And deep learning, sorry, deep learning example, one of the real world example. So if you're from Mumbai, if you come from my resource, uh, more the language here is Kannada and you may not know in the Kannada with the help of this deep learning where you get translated. You get whatever you speak, uh, the information get translated and conveyed to the other person or whatever the vice versa. The, these are the examples of this real time examples. Okay, this is altogether an artificial intelligence for you guys. As the principal ma'am said, uh, he ma'am quoted Elon Musk uh, quote, uh, uh, quote. I'm repeating the same thing as ma'am said. It is like nowadays they're saying the author has told that future artificial intelligence will be implanted to human body and brains in order to enhance the working of human. We'll may be implanted by the artificial intelligence in order to make more. See, Avenger movie, whatever we have seen, that is more of artificial intelligence. So I can, uh, I think it's 12 now. I can wind up this session by saying uh, AI, AI has full of surprises for us in future. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I think I'm done with my time. Um, uh, yeah. I thank the organizer for this. Hope I've done justice for the... <laughs> yeah, I think, ma'am. I will, uh, we will request our participants to pose in the clear questions uh, related to ma'am. We have Dr. Karuna Sinha and uh, Manisha madam, Dr. they are moderators who will be taking up your questions and will be posing it to madam Rupa. So participants, please put up your questions in the chat box. Uh, by that time, ma'am, I would like to know something as to what do we mean by intelligent agent? It is something that I have uh, read related to artificial intelligence, but what yes. exactly it is? Intelligent agents, as I said there, in deep learning concept, it comes with intelligent agents. As we saw the in-between layers, I didn't explain much on that because it was more of technical terms. Uh, we saw this uh, neurons, this neurons, middle layers neurons. This will be acting as an agents, intelligent agents, in order to say that this is two, this is three. These agents will be having the information about how to write to the weights will be there in that. Some so we call it as neurons and intelligent agents as this because it has some weights and some information about all the inputs we have. This is more on deep learning concepts, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Karuna ma'am, I think there is a question in uh, the chat. Uh, yes, yes, Shreema ma'am. Thank you, Shreema ma'am. Very good afternoon, Rupa ma'am. Uh, it was definitely a wonderful session. Let me first thank you uh, for a very informative uh, session. I think if you ask me, I have learned so many aspects of artificial intelligence today, which thank I never you. thank you so much for a wonderful and informative session. Uh, Rupa ma'am, there are certain questions which have been posed by uh, the participants. They have posted it in the chat box. There is one question, if I have understood it appropriately, Fias. Mr. Fias has asked, is, is machine learning a student-centered approach? Yes, I, I mean, I didn't get the question properly, student-centered. Yeah, I have just, uh, even I wrote to him, uh, can you put it um, clearly? Uh, so, but uh, if I get it, he has, uh, he has written machine learning a student-centered approach. So I could, if Fias is there, can he put his question clearly to ma'am? Till then, we can have another question, ma'am. What yeah. is student-centered uh, learning approach, which has been asked by Rajkumar? What is? Student-centered learning approach. Student-centered learning approach. Yes. I think uh, learning approach is like, well, there are different types of learning approaches. Here, uh, I, I'm not getting the keyword of student learning approach. I think whether we can learn the make the system to learn or something like that. Yeah, there are different ways of learning here. I'm actually, to be frank, I'm not getting the question properly. What is student-centered learning? Can they elaborate a bit? That is Mr. Rajkumar. Uh, Mr. Rajkumar, are you around? 
All right, uh, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, there is. Uh, we can take till the time uh, they come uh, or they are around. Uh, we have Dr. Anjali uh, has um, put a question. She has written down. Please uh, throw some light on the application of machine learning in finance or financial analytics. Yeah, um, applications are many in finance. Actually, as I said. Harish sir is talking more about that in the next session. He is, uh, he is saying everything about the uh, applications on all the sectors. Yes, uh, participants so in the next session, Harish sir will be touching upon applications of artificial intelligence. So in finance also. Yeah. So all those areas will be cleared. Other than that, the queries uh, can be answered by Rupa ma'am. Okay. Rupa ma'am, I think. Uh, sorry, Karuna ma'am, I think there are other questions. Yes, yes. Radhika has asked another question, ma'am. She has asked, how can we use artificial intelligence in medical field? Okay. As I quoted the example in here also, uh, artificial intelligence like uh, machine learning, if you are make using medical field in the sense, in the remote areas and all, there won't be any doc specialized doctors and all. So if you put the artificial products there, the products of artificial in, in rural area and all, specialization people won't go there. General medicine only will be there. So if you put the product there and that information is sent via to the specialist, they can help them to diagnose it. Uh, so no need of the specialist to go the, in the rural area and work on it. So in that way, artificial intelligence will play a role in the medical field. Also, uh, for example, in the cancerous cell, if you have majority, the cancer is the major disease nowadays. So identifying the cancerous cell is tedious and monotonous jo job in a pathologist. They should keep on looking at the microscope and ident identify, okay, this is a non-cancerous cell. This is a cancerous cell. Identifying, segmenting it, clustering is a tedious and monotonous job where error can occur easily. If the machine does that, if the machine does that, the error rate is very less and the time taken is very, uh, very less. Error and time are taken very less. So we can give the result very fast and very accurately, which is very useful in the medical field. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Another question is, uh, can computer teachers teach artificial intelligence in school? Yeah. Actually, computer teachers, yes, uh, it depends on the syllabus. How do you frame? Uh, it depends on the syllabus, how the, um, the body has framed for you. They can teach, and not only computer science to uh, faculties, anyone who are interested, who has the keen of studying this, they can teach, I think. I feel that now. All right. Uh, thank you, ma'am, once again. Another question is there. How can we use artificial intelligence in, in classrooms? Priyanka Gandhi has asked this question. In the classrooms? Yes. Okay. Uh, for example, in the student lecture point of view, taking an attendance. Taking an attendance is a tedious job for Sometimes proxies will be given. We can't identify it. Last benches have their own mischievous things and all. So if you place a camera as in, in the entrance of the classroom, as soon as the student comes in, his attendance has been taken. Whether it's the, as soon as he enters, his face has been recognized and attendance is taken. The job for the faculty has been reduced there. Mm -hmm. That is one thing in the classroom for attendance. And also, for example, teaching is uh, in the artificial intelligence is more customized. It, it has become more customized in the classroom. For example, until unless a student is uh, uh, not covered that complete syllabus, the next chapter is been not been taught. We can't, uh, like, it can be used in that way. And in order to analyze the student's performance, we can make use of artificial intelligence. Student performance in the sense how he has answered, how we are, the feedback of him and the uh, a report he has given and also the evaluation metrics can be included in artificial intelligence and we can evaluate the student. This way we can use artificial intelligence. All right. Uh, Mr. Fias has once again uh, put up his question. Mission learning is student oriented approach. Okay. Student learning approach, machine learning. Okay, if I say if if a student wants to write an assignment or something like that, if I consider, if the student has been given some assignment and he wants to write an assignment, 
rather than he going checking for each and every book in the library and taking the information and putting it he says he, he get gives the information this kind of book is needed or this is the assignment question been given so let's take that uh, give me that information it will the ai machine will say these are the books uh, which has the answer for that particular question so that will be given and that person the student can refer only that textbook rather than randomly checking all the books he has the list of books what to check what not to check so that will be a student centric machine learning there all right uh, we have another question how is artificial intelligence useful in overall educational field uh, rural education field same thing as i said in medical field also rural area teachers don't go there technology don't go there ma'am so, ma'am yeah. one minute not rural it is overall educational field overall overall yes yeah overall education field as see now now the education is anytime anywhere look at this domain what you see i'm sitting in mysore you are somewhere else and you are in mumbai and knowledge has been transferred here so overall it is this is how education everywhere any time also that is an product this is also a product of artificial intelligence this is how machine learning algorithm is done so your web pages or your google links your google meets these are nothing but the products of your artificial intelligence this is how it is helpful in overall education only tagline any time any everywhere correct uh, now uh, another question is there uh, asking uh, what are the pre requirements needed for artificial intelligence in school education pre requirements to work on artificial intelligence the, the, those two subsets that is nothing but deep learning and machine learning concepts you should be knowing in order to work on the artificial intelligence okay uh, another question is how beneficial now you have said from teaching point uh, how beneficial artificial intelligence will be for school students school students okay if you have heard about the byju's product yes uh, yes byju's is an product of the same thing that is this is how it is helpful in school and nowadays look at the school also they are making use of lms app those app where it gives the information next going uh, happening uh, event or time table everything is using the lms app okay that is learning app there are many learning app one is example is byju's wasu there are many learning apps which are explicitly for school students these are the products of ai uh, shreema ma'am can we take um, because there are many questions yeah can we take um, all the questions uh, i think one or two questions more karuna ma'am by that time sir is joining okay 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 fine fine um ma'am uh, rupa ma'am yeah ma Uh, another uh, next question you have already uh, answered because that was based for uh, more apps which are more apps you have already um, answered yeah. that question now another question next question is what is the difference between artificial intelligence and machine learning i am learning i am sure it's machine learning artificial in uh, machine learning is the subset of artificial intelligence whatever artificial intelligence wants to uh, uh, work it should take it takes the help of the machine learning machine learning has uh, more of algorithms more of tools in machine learning whereas this artificial intelligence make use of the product of machine learning it makes use of the product of the machine learning and it makes and use the product and use the final product right? but in between working patterns and all is done by machine learning algorithms and tools are there in machine learning but ai make use of this output as an input Uh, karuna ma'am i think sir has joined in okay. so we will uh, continue with the question and answer sessions whatever is uh, towards the end of the session thank you thank you very much karuna ma'am for posing the question thank you uh, manisha madam uh, whatever are the questions we will be addressing it to harish sir towards the end of the session all, all the questions in the whatsapp thank you karuna ma'am and manisha ma'am now i request my colleague dr manjit sembe to propose vote of thanks to dr rupa over to you manjit ma'am thank you thank you dr shriva banerji don't mind it we all are using smartphones some of us have engaged the service of alexa and by the series of movies the avengers and we know that all these are based on artificial intelligence 
but for most of us artificial intelligence was a technical jargon i am so glad and i wish to extend my very warm gratitude to our learned resource person dr ck rupa who took us on an interesting journey on what artificial intelligence is in layman's language madam showed us the meaning of artificial intelligence compared human and machine intelligence the need for artificial intelligence elaborated on types of intelligence through more light on deep learning and all along she used relevant examples so that we learn lay persons can comprehend this technological term with more ease we had changed places today so machines have learned from us humans today we humans were trying to learn what machines have learned from us and how they are useful to us on behalf of gujarat research societies hansraj jivandas college of education our principal dr anita swami the entire ajce faculty and team i express my heartfelt gratitude to madam dr c k rupa for being here with us sharing your valuable expertise clarifying our ideas on artificial intelligence and for adding so much value in this time that we have spent here with you today thank you so much madam once again from all of us on behalf of the ajc e family over to you dr shima banerjee thank you madam uh, participants we are really uh, fortunate to have rupa ma'am as well as arish sir so thank you rupa ma'am now it's time to listen to our next resource person eminent person professor harish who has who is joined with us i think sir you have joined with us yeah ma'am sir is here yeah yeah fine yeah. fine fine okay. thank you ma'am thank you manjit ma'am and thank you shri ma'am thanks. thanks for giving me this opportunity thanks. and sir is here and he'll be continuing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. thank so you now, thank you dear now i request my colleague dr vaishali savan to kindly introduce our next resource person dr b s harish to the audience over to you dr savan thank you dr shrima and a very uh, very good afternoon to each one of you it is said that artificial intelligence can make the world a better place by making us work productively live longer and have cleaner energy how will ai achieve this what are the applications of ai to help us understand this we have with us dr b s harish dr b s harish is associated with the department of information science and engineering jss science and technology university mysore dr b s harish obtained b e in electronics and communication in 2002 m in networking and internet engineering in 2004 both from vishveshwarya technological university karnataka dr harish completed phd titled classification of large text data from university of mysore karnataka in 2011 sir is a life member of a number of organizations to name a few in stick ayanga Lim limste his area of interest includes machine learning text mining and computational intelligence sir has 86 publications and 464 citations to his credit sir was a visiting researcher at department of informatics bioengineering robotics and system engineering university of genova italy sir has undertaken and completed a number of projects at the national and international level uh, such as the melinda uh, gates uh, foundation project the list of achievement goes on and on but i would like to mention some more remarkable achievements uh, of mr uh, dr b s harish he was awarded rank 1 band in the unconstrained year recognition challenge 2019 competition held at greece awarded first place in gray matter segmentation task grand challenge on mr brain image segmentation workshop in japan 
awarded first place in recognition task in sclera segmentation and eye detection benchmarking competition at Colorado, USA, awarded first prize in segmentation and second prize in recognition in sclera segmentation benchmarking competition at Sweden, awarded best paper award during the IEEE International Conference on Knowledge Engineering and Applications, Singapore. Sir, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to have you with us, sir. And on behalf of um, management of Gujarat Research Society's Hansraj Jivandas College of Education, our principal, Dr. Anita Swami, madam, staff and the participants, I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. And I request you to commence with the session. Thank you very much, madam. <clears throat> uh, thanks for the uh, opportunity uh, given. In fact, uh, uh, I should be uh, thankful to Dr. Shrima ma'am because uh, uh, she is the one who is coordinating from day one. Uh, so uh, I think you took a pretty long time in uh, you know giving uh, uh, the elaborate uh, uh, introduction about myself, uh, which is not uh, uh, <laughs> needed. But still, if you incorporate a kind of an intelligence, it's just a, a simple statement. You just go to Google, type BSR, -ish, so you'll get everything. So. Uh, that that's that's really saves uh, uh, you know almost uh, two to three minutes of time. But any ways, uh, Dr. Vaishali, madam, thank you very much for uh, the wonderful uh, introduction uh, you given, and also um, uh, uh, I thank uh, uh, Professor Archana, ma'am, and Anita, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity to share. Uh, it's not really uh, uh, a kind of a talk that I'm going to give, but rather I'll try to share some of the experiences, you know, that uh, uh, myself and uh, uh, my teammates, uh, uh, my research scholars uh, uh, have done. Uh, so some of the very interesting applications, because uh, if you see uh, the present uh, uh, trend, everybody is talking about uh, uh, something. This is a kind of a buzzword uh, in the present uh, uh, IT field. Uh, that is uh, uh, artificial intelligence. It could be a machine learning. And if you go one step ahead, and if you are more tech savvy, uh, you should be using a word called uh, deep learning, right? So probably we'll keep aside of what is machine learning and uh, deep learning, uh, rather because that requires a lot of uh, 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 understanding of. Uh, uh, fundamentals of mathematics and fundamentals of computer science and uh, even the fundamentals of science to the certain extent. Uh, so we being uh, the computer science uh, engineers and also I understand that you know uh, many of the participants I think uh, if I uh, if I am right uh, there are uh, probably more than 200 participants uh, uh, who are uh, joined the session uh, which is uh, really a very good number. Uh, probably they might be uh, in the uh, from the different streams, right? So from the different streams, and uh, uh, they are doing uh, uh, different types of works on their uh, different uh, domain. Uh, so whatever uh, I'm going to uh, talk something about uh, the applications, right? So this is what actually we try to uh, use, and uh, you know we try to incorporate in our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, activities. So. In probably we might not be knowing that this is where actually we have used the artificial intelligence, right? So uh, as Dr. Rupa, I know already told, uh, these three are uh, uh, the parallel phase that is artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the uh, deep learning. Uh, in one or the other way, uh, there is not at all a possible uh, to speak something about uh, the artificial intelligence without the learning mechanism. And you cannot talk something about the deep learning without understanding what is basically a machine learning. So this is uh, what actually we need to uh, know. And uh, uh, I think uh, morning uh, or just you know before the conclusion of uh, the uh, last session, uh, there was some fundamental question: uh, the prerequisite. What is the prerequisite that you need uh, in order to understand uh, the uh, concept of artificial artificial intelligence? Because uh, uh, as such, uh, there is no any uh, uh, something which is very new things to be uh, known to uh, uh, for an, any researcher who, who wants to work on the artificial intelligence. Uh, they need to really understand how exactly they try to tackle the uh, problem. If they are really good in how to try to tackle the problem that they are going to get, uh, you know, in in their regular day-to-day uh, -day activities or in their own domain. 
I think to the certain extent, the same thing will be simulated through the computer machines. So that really solves uh, uh, the most of the uh, problem. So with this preamble, maybe I'll just try to uh, present uh, uh, my slides. Uh, 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 now, is it uh, visible, uh, Dr. Shima, ma'am? My slides? Can, can Ye my slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, I'll be uh, spending some time uh, in uh, talking about uh, the artificial intelligence and its uh, application. As I uh, mentioned already, uh, you need not to really worry too much uh, uh, about the core part of uh, the computer concepts uh, or the advanced uh, uh, concepts of uh, artificial intelligence. It could be machine learning or the deep learning, but uh, the fundamental uh, strategy that you are supposed to use is uh, try to take a problem, a very simple problem, try to see how exactly your brain solves that problem. Right, so this is part one. And part two is whatever the solution that your brain is going to simulate, try to make use your computer machine and try to make your machine to solve in the same way that how exactly human brain thinks. That's it. That is basically an artificial intelligence. So I think if you do that, uh, most of the problem is solved. Suppose, for example, if I want to travel from one source to another destination, right? So my brain does many things, right? So my brain does many things and uh, you should really come out with what could be the best you know, path to reach the uh, destination. Even uh, the computer machine or, the, uh, uh, or, or any intelligent uh, machine will do the same. It tries to compute all the possible uh, uh, you know, paths to the uh, destination and uh, makes uh, to reach the destination with minimum amount of time and uh, with minimum uh, uh, effort, right? So, and uh, whatever the other criteria that you are going to consider, right? So, this is what uh, actually uh, the artificial intelligence uh, does, right? So, and one more point that I wanted to uh, you know, uh, uh, make a note here in this uh, context is uh, as such artificial intelligence or, or, or uh, uh, the machine learning or uh, deep learning, uh, it could be, uh, it is not really, uh, and or the, or the subject does not really belong solely to the field of computer science. You please uh, take that you know, mindset from your mind. Uh, absolutely, if you see the present trend, the artificial intelligence, it is not really belongs to the only computer science, uh, you know, domain, nor it, it is, it is used each and every aspects of uh, 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 domain, uh, starting from uh, the political science, to the economics, to the journalism, uh, to the uh, uh, languages, right, so to the languages, in either it could be and regional languages or it could be an international languages, right? So they are doing tremendously good. Uh, the concept of artificial intelligence is doing tremendously good. And somebody asked, uh, uh, you know, some of the examples like medical industry uh, and uh, uh, the business industry. And uh, there was one question uh, that how it could be a student centric. Probably I'll try to, you know, answer all this question maybe at the end of the session. Right, so, so try to you know, remove that uh, mindset in your uh, uh, brain that it does not really belongs to the only computer science. So yes, it is an open field. And uh, now, uh, uh, I think yesterday, uh, if I am right, uh, Dr. Uh, Shima Madam was telling that there was a, a top uh, national, you know, uh, national education policy. And uh, there was one of the uh, criteria in the national education policy that, uh, you know, the more, <clears throat> you know, uh, importance uh, should be given to the interdisciplinary kind of research or transdisciplinary kind of research, right? So such that uh, the political science student getting, uh, you know, involved with the computer science or the uh, computer science student getting involved with the journalism or journalism student getting involved with the commerce student, right? So this is what is expected in the next coming days. It is, if you are really very good in only one field, but you should really look for uh, where do you uh, find the application of your field, right? So then only, I think at the end of the day, whatever we learn, right? So whatever we learn and whatever we develop as an algorithm, so it could be an artificial intelligence model and all, ultimately at the end of the day, it should solve some, some of the societal uh, problems that we are uh, facing in our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, activities, right? So with this, I'll just try to uh, start uh, uh, my presentation. I'm not going to spend much on uh, uh, this point uh, because it's already been <clears throat> told. 
uh, by Dr. Siki Rupa, what is intelligence? Uh, it's learning, reasoning, and uh, understanding. Right. So if you just try to keep all the contents that are present in the uh, slide, and if you think uh, very practically, what is intelligence basically? See, there are around 200 participants in this uh, you know, uh, session. And if I pose a problem, right? So if I pose a problem and I can expect the 200 sets, different sets of solution for the, for the problem that I'm going to pose, right? So how exactly uh, it has been generated, whether it is a good solution or a bad solution that is secondary, but you try to get a solution for that, right? So how it is possible? It is only through some or the other way of, you know, uh, understanding the problem, right? So understanding the problem, you try to understand the first and foremost thing. You try to understand the problem. You try to think the logical, logically, whether is it a feasible solution that you are trying to give. And then if you have already have a domain knowledge or if you have already tackled such kind of a problem, it will be an additional advantage such that, you know, the solution could be more appropriate. So this is what actually the human brain does. Right? So this is what actually uh, we does. Right? So hence, in one word to say, we should be always thankful, especially uh, the present trend or the market is playing a vital role with the usage of word called artificial intelligence and machine learning and deep learning and all. It's not basically uh, the field that has been initiated by the computer science engineer. Right? So, but we should be always thank the one of the best domain that exists uh, in this uh, you know uh, in this present trend and that domain is called as psychology right so what is basically in psychology psychology is basically a study of human brain right so you try to simulate you try to think you try to chart down that how exactly your brain works right so you try to chart down how exactly the solution is generated from your brain right so you try to give the logical reasoning right so how exactly uh, your brain is trying to push uh, the solution for the problem that are encountered, right? So if you do that, I think 50% of the problem is solved. Then comes whether it is a good answer, whether it is a bad answer, or if it is a good answer, can you fine tune it, right? So then you try to optimize your results that are generated, right? So such that you should take minimum time and maximum efficiency, right? So these are all the things you know, uh, that is really uh, taken care uh, by the uh, intelligent algorithm, which is just basically and presenting how exactly our human brain uh, works, right? So this is uh, uh, the fundamental thing that we should really uh, understand. And probably uh, she might have already discussed the difference between uh, the uh, human intelligence and the artificial intelligence, right? So this is, and, and an amazing you know uh, 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 difference uh, that you should really uh, come out with right so you should really uh, find out what is the basic difference uh, that you should really uh, find between the human intelligence and uh, the mission uh, intelligence right so probably i uh, may ask any one of the participant with the permission of dr shrima ma'am right so other than that you know the machines can store maximum data and it uh, it is very fast uh, it can store uh, the uh, data in huge. Other than these uh, set of differences, can you just tell me there is an one unique difference between the human intelligence or and the machine intelligence? I am not going to say it is an you know unique difference, but there is an one fundamental characteristics of a human brain or human intelligence and a machine intelligence. Brain is basically an intelligence. Uh, can anyone or uh, any participant can tell uh, what would be that uh, very interesting characteristics of human brain? Only one characteristic. Any 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 participant? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, Nikita, ma'am. Uh, sir, is it uh, like uh, human brain or human intelligence can uh, adapt to new environment? I think, uh, I think machine uh, is also does that. A machine uh, can also adapt to that, right? So, a, a best example that I can give you is, I think you might be knowing uh, uh, Miss Sophia. Uh, no. No, uh, Miss, Miss Sophia is uh, basically a human robot, right? So, and uh, that's a human robot where the first uh, Muslim nation has given a citizenship. And that Sophia comes from UAE, United Arab uh, uh, Emirates, 
right so why i give this example is sophia is so good enough right so when uh, she was on a uh, you know live uh, uh, interview uh, with the uh, uh, cnn channel and the journalist asked a question uh, uh, like uh, what would be your uh, future expectation can you just tell me uh, what was her answer any guess nikita ma'am any uh, guess it should be interactive then only we can enjoy the session yes let it be any any answer human uh, can adapt but uh, like robots you said needs to be programmed right yeah yeah she, uh, because see, why i gave that example is you you said that you know it it adaptability right so you you spoke something about uh, the adaptability uh, why this uh, i have given that example is uh, the answer that she gave right so which was not really thought by anyone else she got adapted to that that was the tremendous answer that was uh, given and in fact uh, the whole world was shocked to listen to that answer from the human okay. robot Uh, what what was the answer any guess mere guess at least sir uh, i think uh, robots uh, do not have emotions i don't think so because they are they are the machines basically you can't expect uh, the machines to have any emotions so we humans can imagine we have imagination power oh, robots cannot imagine machine machines can do best imagination i'll show you some 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 examples in my slides i'll show you some examples any other good answers good answers no doubt they are the best answers sir uh, maybe the machine would have said the same thing maybe she would have a family or very close uh, may, is it jyoti shetty yes very very close answer madam right so that uh, robo human robo has given the answer saying that she wants to have a baby right so that uh, human robo wants to have a baby right so it was the entire community right so the entire community was literally shocked right so that wa that was the intelligence that it got through the adaptability right so why i give that example is you see how machines are getting adapted right so how machines are getting adapted to that right so that's that is where even our uh, brain will also do that same right so because uh, we are very you know ambitious right so today we have this and tomorrow we want something else and day after tomorrow we should we we uh, you know we need uh, something else so that is how actually even uh, uh, the machine intelligent algorithms are also getting you know adaptable by themselves but but still that answer was uh, you know still for that question it was not answered uh, one of the fundamental characteristics which get uh, differentiated between the human intelligence and the uh, human brain and the machine brain jyoti shetty uh, sir i am not really sure as one of our friend answered maybe feelings or uh, se sense feelings sense uh, yeah feeling i think uh, sophia had feeling so that is why she wanted to have a baby but then sense i mean how will she sense how I mean, you, you you mean to say common sense sir? they are very good in uh, common sense very competent <laughs> sir not that <laughs> Uh, right so anyways i'll just tell you the answer is the answer is uh, the very interesting answer see human brain as one of the best characteristics that exist and that characteristics is the concept of forgetfulness right so the concept of jyoti ma'am sorry i didn't sorry sir i didn't hear you sorry the concept of forgetfulness forget we forget yeah. the things <laughs> Okay, so got it. Right, so you will forget the things. If you don't forget the things, what will happen? We keep loading, we keep keeping them with us, and which will ha ha harm us more. No, at the end of the day, we'll go mad. <laughs> okay, so got right, it. So because see, ours is uh, something a finite machine, right? Ours is a finite machine, right? So our human brain has certain capacity, right? So to accommodate. Uh, uh whatever the uh, learning things that we are going to day uh, do in our day to day activities right so if you go on uh, keeping the, all the things in your brain right so it will get drained out right so it will get drained out and the end of the day you will be a mad because too many things will be you know uh, coming into the coming into the uh, brain and you know you are not able to process the things right so that's the beauty of the human brain and human brain should be always like that should be like that 
otherwise there is no difference between a human brain and a machine brain right so see why i'm telling all these things are they are all the best part of the psychology right so and we are trying to simulate the same through the uh, machines that's all we are trying to do other than absolutely we are not doing an any extra thing here in case of uh, uh, artificial intelligence or machine intelligence right so we are doing the, the same from day one right so we are just trying to simulate how our human brain thinks we try to take up a new problem we just see how it is going to get solved through our human brain and try to simulate through the machine so that's all actually we are doing but but there is one catch right so but there is one catch as i said our intelligence and our human uh, you know perseverance uh, has got uh, some limitations right so i have got some limitations and it varies from person to person because there are 200 members here in this session and if i give a problem say you can think of you know 200 different sets of a solution right so how do i tell which is good and which is bad that's the uh, secondary part right so such kind of an uh, applications will really uh, find uh, the good set of if you make use of the machine that is what actually i'm going to discuss in the next coming uh, slides so i'll just skip all these uh, things because it's already been uh, dealt by uh, the other uh, speaker uh, see uh, this is what is needed uh, uh, in 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 every day's uh, activities see there was a question right so there was a question that how exactly it can be used you know uh, by the students and there was a question that how exactly it can be used in the medical industry and there was a question that how uh, uh, it can really enhance my business right so it, there was a question right so how exactly uh, i can really control over the uh, you know uh, my language that i am speaking how exactly i can improve my uh, languages right so you see right so if you see the mouse cursor right so you find the application of an artificial intelligence and all the domains you can find the application so that's the beauty of this uh, computer science are uh, in specific in general are in specifically uh, the applications of the artificial intelligence you take philosophy yes you have not many applications uh, uh, in 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 the field of uh, philosophy right so you take uh, uh, mathematics right so uh, it is you take you take mathematics i think uh, there are uh, quite a lot of lot of problems you know, uh, that exist and you cannot imagine your life without the mathematics and computer science right so mathematics and you take statistics yes statistics absolutely needed because uh, our human brain right so our human aisha please mute yourself it is disturbing the resource person aisha are you there online yeah yeah, yeah. She, she kindly muted. mute you yeah she muted thank you yeah, thank you so statistics because see our human brain is more interested uh, in 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 validating the things right so uh, there are two ways of validation right so there are two way, uh, ways of validation uh, can anyone uh, tell how there are two ways of validation how exactly your human brain validates the thing priyanshi priyanshi can anyone tell any participant can tell how exactly uh, 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 the human brain uh, validates the things how exactly human brain evaluates the things any participant any answer let it be any answer let it be wrong I don't mind by comparing against some standards okay uh, good answer good answer by comparing some uh, to the certain standards okay then uh, based upon uh, past experience uh based upon the past ex past experience but i am talking you need to have some kind of an validation see a simple example uh, i think osob uh, datta yes right? so osob datta right so i'll give a simple example you say uh, for example if you take uh, one student he says after his exams i have done best right so i have done best right so uh, how do your brain measures the best uh you know comparing with the other performances maybe you know uh, this is better this is better than the all than uh, better than all other performances that's why i said that this is but, better but but uh, but you should you should have something right so you should have something that something is what you should have expectations. something expectations sorry expectations means uh, uh, expectation uh, expectation not really expectation not really some standards yeah some sorry? standards 
some standard which I consider to be. Uh, I said something standards. What is that standard or something? Okay, Mental I, satisfaction. Satisfaction. See, uh, there was satisfaction and uh, uh, comparing and past experience and all. Now I'll give you a clue. But how do you measure this? How do you measure the satisfaction? How do you measure measure this satisfaction? Maybe at the end of the day, you should you should feel that you know it was worth the spending of you know one and a half hours of attending the uh, session on AI applications. You got satisfied. How do you how do you measure that? How do you measure that? And you take up the same example. I told the students have said that he has done best in his exam. How do you measure that? Kalpana ma'am? Yeah. Nikita? Learning taking place? Learning taking place? No. No. See, uh, I'll give you the answer. The uh, answer sir, is... Compare uh, our answer with uh, our perceptions. Priya? Uh, our answer with our perception, what I perceive, uh, we compare uh, with the examination, uh, with the answer uh, we have written in the examination. Okay, that, that's fine. That's really fine. But see, uh, we don't really, uh, you know, uh, consider all these things to tell that that student has performed well. Right. So only way that we are going to validate is, see, the question paper was for 10 marks and out of 10 marks, he has scored 9. So can you tell 9 is best? Nikita, can you, can you tell, can you tell uh, 9 is best? 9 is good marks? Uh, in general, yes, but the capability of the child needs to be kept no, in mind. See, out of, out of 10, he has scored 9 and that is what actually everybody is, you know, happy with that marks. Right, so no doubt you are, you are talking practically that it should not be the only marks that has to be considered. That is well yeah. accepted. That is well accepted, absolutely accepted. But still, if you want to really showcase yourself, right, so this is what the performance that I achieved. See, we don't accept, right, so I am extremely good in programming, but I have scored only 2 out of 10. Do you accept it? Do you accept it? No. no, we don't no. accept it, right? So, yes, our human brain, right? So, is more you know, comfortable towards some kind of an evaluation. And basically, there are two ways of evaluating. And that is done through the uh, statistics. So, one is uh, the quantitative evaluation and the qualitative evaluation, right? So, quantitative is nothing but something which can be quantified. For example, 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10. So, this is quantification. And some madam has said something like satisfaction. I'm very much happy. She is so beautiful, right? So she is so beautiful. Aishwarya Rai is so beautiful, right? So Aishwarya Rai is beautiful to me, but uh, the other person may not like Aishwarya Rai, right? So how do you measure this? So that is through some qualitative analysis. He's a very good person. So how do you measure good? So that is qualitative nature, right? So he is good, uh, nine marks, for his good goodness, nine marks out of 10, right? So you can just at least, you know, merely you can compare uh, that how good he is, right? So this is this is how actually the statistics plays a very, very important role. And the economic, economics, uh, yes, the day entire, uh, the uh, field of economics is because uh, the economics, commerce, people are every day speaking something about the digitization concept, right? So each and everything is uh, something called digitization, and whatever uh, the uh, business that we are doing, it's everything is through online, right? So everything is online, but how do we do that? So it's through some sorts of an, uh, you know, you need to have some kind of an intelligence there. Neuroscience, so that is a good example for machine learning and deep learning. Psychology, there is no doubt. So because all these artificial intelligence came into existence, it's because of the psychology, computer engineering, control theory, linguistics, right? So language. Right, so these are some of the class building, you know, fields uh, that you can really think of and irrespective of whatever the uh, different domains that you are trying to work on. See friends, I am telling you because today this is the major breakthrough research that you can really plan for your future. Right, so if you are in mathematics field, try to bring artificial intelligence to mathematics. See what is the solution that will be a breakthrough. If you are a psychology student, you try to bring artificial intelligence. How exactly the psychology can be improved? Try to crossbreed. Try to have interdisciplinary kind of research, right? So such, that is where actually you need to uh, think of from the perspective of 
uh, you know, uh, uh, breeding the different uh, domains uh, to achieve the best set of an, uh, solution. Right. So no doubt, uh, in the, all the fields, uh, finds the tremendous application. Right. So I think I don't uh, touch upon this because it's already uh, been done. Right. So I think this is a very interesting slide. Right. So this is a very interesting slide because uh, this is what actually uh, we bear in the SA and this is what we are now. Right. So this is what we are now. So what is this basically? What is this basically? Evolution of man. Correct. Right. So evolution of man. So uh, evolution. Right. So evolution of man. Right, so we were in this stage and we have reached this stage, but we are still ahead with this stage. I'll try to, uh, you know, view those uh, examples maybe at the later stage. Yes, right, so early man, uh, these are all some of the very interesting things uh, to understand how actually we got evolved ourselves, right, so to the present uh, stage. So discovered cultivation, built a house and settled and domesticated the animals, right, so these are all uh, the things that were actually it has been initiated uh, through our human brain, right? So machines were not there, right? So during those stages, machines were not there. See, we cultivated, right? So we cultivated and we grown our own, you know, grains, food grains, right? So that is basically in cultivation, right? So when did this cultivation started, right? So very long years back, right? So and then we constructed a house, right? So we were in the earth, we were in the rock. Right, so we were inside the rocks, caves, right. So and then we constructed the uh, house, right. So and now we are, you know, settled in our house, right. So and now, you know, we used to use uh, animals, right. So we used to animals, we used to tame the animals, and we used to make the animals uh, usage for our purposes, right. So that is basically and domestication, right. So this is how actually uh, human evolution, you know, uh, taken place, right. So and you see this. Right, so this is basically a natural uh, intelligence. See, your, uh, you know, uh, uh, bulls are so well trained, right? So it clearly, uh, you know, knows where to keep the, where to keep their uh, toes, right? So not spoiling the uh, grains. So that's the beauty of this, you know, intelligence, right? So no doubt, uh, you know, it's a simple image that where we are depicting uh, the farmer plowing his land, but you see the intelligence that is present in these. I know uh, uh, bulls, right? So in this bulls, such that you know, uh, such that they try to take a decision, you know, whether where to keep the where to keep their uh, toes. So that is where actually you know uh, we have incorporated the intelligence to these uh, bulls. And you take this circus image, right? So you see this cheetah is getting trained by his master, right? So it's getting trained by his master, right? So that is how actually we have incorporated the intelligence to the uh, uh, to the animals also, right? So you see this image, right? So we are using these dogs tremendously, especially in the forensic science application. Whenever there is a crime, the first and foremost thing that we do is we'll try to uh, bring the dog squad, right? So what is this dog squad will do? It senses uh, through its uh, nose and try to find uh, where exactly the criminal is, you know, uh, uh, hidden. Right, so these are all the different types of intelligence that we have incorporated even to the animals. Right, so it is possible only through our intelligence. Right, so where our intelligence is shared to the other living being. Right, so they are called as the animals. Right, so this is a different uh, civilization that we have seen. Right, so see, and these civilizations have not used any kind of the advanced techniques that are available in the literature, but they are considered to be the best. Right, so, but they are considered to be the best. Right, so we don't have any architecture who has designed this temple here. Right, so we don't have any architecture who has built this pyramid here. We don't have an architecture who has developed this uh, civilization here. Right, so this is our intelligence, basic intelligence that is where actually we have put forth and we have constructed and we have evolved during all these uh, civilization uh, process. Right? So they are all the empirical paradigms, right? So empirical paradigms means, so I'm giving a live example, right? So I'm giving a live example. See, see if you see this image, right? So a pillar is standing. It's standing in such a way that there is no any engineering concept that is used. But still, you know, how, uh, you know, wonderfully it has been designed, right? So such that irrespective of you know, uh, the climate changes, irrespective of rain, irrespective of sun, right? So it stands so erect, right? So that's the phenomenal uh, concept of the human uh, brain, right?
right so this is this happens only through our intelligence right so this happens only through our intelligence right so now when we see the previous slide so we just incorporated the intelligence into the living beings right so but gradually right so we try to come out with some you know standby mechanism right so such that whatever we are trying to uh, make use right so whatever we are trying to uh, you know uh, make use of uh, uh, through some kind of an you know uh, some kind of a living beings right so can it be simulated through the non living things right so can it be simulated through the non living things so that was the first thought uh, that was given and this is what uh, uh, for the thought that has been triggered in the human brain these are the different solutions that has been given by the different uh, you know scientists or the different researchers right so we have a steam engine right so we have a combustion engine we have diesel engine right so we have a vulcanization of rubber we have an airplane that has been designed we have a telephone where we can talk from one source to another destination we have a right so who designed the world uh, right so there are all the tremendous innovations that took place right so in the human brain right so in the human brain which can be uh, simulated by uh, some form of an uh, intelligence right so by some form of an intelligence but ultimate agenda is ultimate agenda is uh, they are not basically the replacement they are just in standby you take you know uh, the uh, train right so you try you, you take an aeroplane right so even we can travel from you know i am sitting in mysore and you people are sitting in uh, some other place i can travel right so i can make use of my hours or i can you make use of my bullock cart and i can reach your place but how many days it takes maybe it takes you know months of time but if i use the aeroplane the purpose is same the purpose is reaching from source to destination but the number of days i am taking is 30 days to reach your destination but if i use the aeroplane i may take only one hour to reach your destination right so the same thing right so which is not practically possible by the living things living beings has been incorporated or been implemented through the through the machines basically there are all the machines you take aeroplane aeroplane is a machine you take a camera camera is a machine you take uh and and steam engine steam engine is a machine basically they are all uh, in one or the other way they are all the uh, machines but these machines have got evolved by themselves right so these machines have got evolved by themselves by incorporating certain level of intelligence right so by incorporating certain level of intelligence and we'll try to see what are those incorporation of uh, intelligence and we are these are all the theoretical paradigm right so theoretical paradigm means so how do you design an an aeroplane you have a theoretical framework for that right so you should go with the wings construction you should have the so many uh, so much of length and so much of breadth right so and the weighing or the weight of the aeroplane should be uh, something uh, the, something else and uh, the maximum number of uh, you know uh, the passengers accommodated will be so and the maximum number of uh, maximum size of the or maximum the weight of the uh, luggage can be dumped into the aircraft it's so much right so these are all the theoretical calculations that they have done and they have an uh, they have an uh, uh, theoretical frameworks in order to achieve these in order to achieve or in order to build these kind of an applications right so observations so what what uh, we have observed right so from 20 years from 19th to 20th uh, century we have seen so many changes that are taking place but amazingly from last 50 years the change is very very rapid right so the change is very very rapid and very very uh, fast and it's not in only one aspect of uh, the domain but it's in all aspect of life right so in all aspect of uh, domains right so we'll try to see how exactly uh, we had uh, we have achieved right so the question is why there is in so much of changes especially from last 50 years right so because it's just because of this person right so it's just because of this person because of the invention of the uh, you know computers right so it, it it because of the invention of the computers right so we should be really thankful to this uh, person charles babbage right so who has invented uh, this computer machine and you see the size of the computing machine right so it is almost occupying the full room size right so but you knew now you see uh, through what mode you have got connected to this uh, zoom class right so probably you are using your 
handheld machine that is basically a mobile phone right so which is a partly around 200 grams right so which is a partly around 200 grams and not more than the size of around uh, you know uh, 17 uh, 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 17 uh, uh, inches or 17 uh, centimeters to uh, 6 to 7 uh, centimeters right so or in the worst possible you are using a tab or you are connected to your laptops or to your desktop machine right okay, so that's really an evolution right so that is basically an uh, evolution right so now we are talking about uh, the computational science and computational paradigm with the invention of uh, the computers right so uh, this is uh, uh, the basic uh, requirement that why there is an increase in the use of technology because lack of manual labors right so we are not really affordable to spend 30 days to reach your destination right so we are not really affordable to lose 30 days just to travel from mysore to your destination right so i have hardly one hour of time right so i should be in a position to reach your destination right so that is uh, one of the fundamental uh, objective increase in population right so it is a population explosion nowadays right so population is increasing uh, you know uh, it's totally uncontrollable right so i think if you see the india and china population every day it's a uh, big headache uh, for these two countries to have in control over the uh, population right so and the third one optimal outcome right so with a minimum resource with a minimum time you should achieve maximum right so that is uh, that that is the uh, need and the productivity should be very high right so the pro at the end of the day the productivity should be very very high right so at the end of the day it's all basically a business right so it's all basically a business even if you go to your you know uh, class right so at the end of the day you should be in a position that what exactly you gained in attending this class right so because you have wasted uh, the petrol you have wasted your time right so you have wasted so much of resources and you have traveled all the way from your home to your class and you have taken the offline class and again you come back in the evening right so at the end of the day you just try to measure your productivity that what did you gain right so you are spending one and a half hours of time so you should be in a position to understand uh, what is uh, the uh, gain that you got uh, by attending this session for one and a half uh, hours, right? So your result should be fast and accurate. Nowadays, the students are so fast and their results are so accurate, right? So they are just tremendous, right? So they are just uh, tremendous, right? So, and also we should be really uh, thankful to this uh, semiconductor industry uh, because they have made so cheaper, especially uh, the computational devices, and uh, uh, the sensors that are available right so hardly you'll be spending minimum amount of time and you are affordable to uh, take uh, the computational devices to the uh, best extent right so increased attention by the research community right so the research is uh, you know the motivation is the uh, need for uh, the research right so hence unless otherwise you don't have any motivation you you are not really uh, you cannot really uh, have any breakthrough in whatever the domain that you are trying to uh, solve Right, so this is uh, what uh, the thing that is uh, expected in this session, right? So the computer should learn uh, by itself, right? So yeah, the computer should learn by itself, probably by acquiring the knowledge and the skill, right? So yes, we have come a long way, right? So in making our computers to learn in many, many different ways uh, by acquiring the knowledge on its own and uh, increasing its skill on its own, right? So and achieve the best results which even you cannot really think uh, uh, those kind of solutions through the human brain right so i'll just skip this slide because it's already been uh, uh, done so here you have something uh, the artificial and your brain intelligence will try to uh, merge this and this is what actually we are going to simulate right so that is basically an artificial uh, intelligence so this is what actually your human brain works right so what are these basically so you try to understand there is an one very interesting word called pattern, right? So very interesting word called pattern, right? So this is a key component of an, any artificial intelligence model, right? So as soon as you see this, this pattern, right? So irrespective of any, any color that it, it appears, right? So immediately you will find, right? So immediately you will find this is a Nokia. And this is quite very interesting example, Maggie, right? So you, as soon as you see this, Right, so this is a pattern that what we are going to store in your uh, brain, right? So what we are going to store in your brain, 
right so without any you know uh, without giving an any thought right so without even giving a single minute to think as soon as if i show this right so immediately you will tell this is an you know box of entropos right so kellogg stokos right so how it is possible because we have seen every day we have understood the pattern and we have stored in our brain and whenever we try to visualize this kind of a picture automatically from our brain it tries to pop up saying that this is a nokia this is an priya uh, pickle box uh, and this is an kellogg's uh, chocos uh, box right so if i show you this right so immediately you can answer so this is a book rack containing the books right so and if i show this image right so you will tell this is a railway station as soon as you see this pattern this pattern this wall or this compound wall is more than enough to say this is basically a pattern that where you are going to see in the railway station but we don't see this kind of a pattern of compounds anywhere else right so that is how actually our human brain works and the same thing we are trying to simulate through the uh, machines right so see i just you know uh, you know uh, segregated right so are 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 uh, you know segregated into the different class see all these will come to you know uh, the one class called library and uh, called as a library and all these four things will come into a uh, one class called as a food items and all these things that they are basically the boards uh, uh, which are uh, they are uh, the uh, boards uh, which are meant for the advertisement right so which are meant for the advertisement right so now uh, can you incorporate certain intelligence what is that intelligence see you can read yourself right so there is a word called women entrepreneurs right so there is a word called an women entrepreneurs right so now i need to come out with a mechanism right so i need to come out with a mechanism such that right so my machine as soon as as soon as it, it sees this image right so automatically it should detect right so automatically it should detect that there is a word called women and entrepreneurs and it should give you right so it should give you that how exact or, or what exactly that is present in this uh, you know in this uh, display board right so women entrepreneurs right so that is what uh, the artificial intelligence does right so a very interesting example that i wanted to uh, cite at this stage is see we have an uh, you know 2008 beijing olympics right so beijing olympics yes or no uh, you heard that uh, the huge amount has been uh, spent especially during uh, 2008 it was started on 8 8 2008 do you recall kalpana ma'am kalpana ma'am or any participant so 8 8 2008 the 2008 olympics started yes or no yes or no there was there was a very interesting problem that this chinese faced what would be that problem anyone any participant what was the basic problem that was faced by the uh, chinese people anyone nikita nikita no okay so the best problem that they faced is see everything is in chinese language but the athletics or the sports personnel are coming from all over the world so that's the big tech right so how to make them to understand the chinese language because they don't use language right so what was the simple solution that they did they used this concept called text text detection and for all the uh, participants who are going to participate in 2008 olympics for each and every person for each and every sports person they gave a simple smartphone right so they gave a simple smartphone such that whenever there is a display board right so whenever there is a display board they'll go in front of the display board and automatically they capture the uh, they capture the uh, text content that is present in the uh, display board and to the whichever the language they need automatically that language was converted into their required uh, language for example i am an indian but unfortunately i don't know english or i don't know chinese right so as soon as i capture the chinese language or, or the english language it has to be converted into an hindi right so i am when some tool in my smartphone which has been given by the uh, organizers such that this is captured the phone captures the text image and automatically it converts into an hindi right so they made so simple right so they made so simple so that was 
highly appreciated throughout the world and including IOC, that is International you know, uh, Olympic Consortium, has highly appreciated that wonderful innovation that has been done by uh, the Chinese, right? So, but now many of the countries will does, does, does the same thing, right? So, and I think if you are using your smartphones, most of the smartphones comes with the uh, translator, right? So you need not to worry too much that you know going to an, any country and without knowing their knowledge is not a big deal nowadays. You go to Italy, your smartphone is you know uh, uh, you know uh, sufficient enough to convert the Italian language to your language. If you go to Russia, right? So your smartphone is more comfortable in converting the Russian language into your required language. So that is where actually you can find the application. Right, so I think supervised learning and the unsupervised learning, this is what actually she might have talked in the uh, previous class. See, now I have a label here, right? So orange, elephants, Mysore Park, capsicum, and men. This is basically an supervised. Why? Because I have a label here. See, if I see this, they are the elephants. If I see this, they are the set of oranges, Mysore Park, capsicum, and they are the uh, men, right? So this is basically an supervised learning. Now the question is, who is this? Right, so now the question is, who is this? This is basically uh, unsupervised, right? So already you have a label. Now I need to tell to which category it belongs to. Does it belongs to this class, elephants class? No, right, so it should, it, it should not go to the elephant class, right? So you should go to a vegetable class? No, it should not go to vegetable class. It should go to the men class because these are, uh, you know, the Prabhdul Kalam sir, right? So who belongs to this particular category, right? So your machine is doing this, right? So your machine is doing this, right? So this is basically unsupervised learning. But this is quite very, very interesting, right? So uh, this is quite very interesting problem, right? So you have a set of people, famous personals uh, uh, present in this image, right? So you have a set of people here, you have a set of people here, and you have a set of people here, right? So now my question is, they see, once again, I'll go one step ahead, right? So and once again, I have, you know, uh, I have, you know, uh, classified. See, I have all men class here, right? So I have all men class here, I have all female class here, and I have fruit class here. If I go one step ahead, right? So I have categorized into the two classes here. I have mixed both men and female here, men and female here, and the same class. See, because this belongs to an political class, and this belongs to an, you know, uh, uh, entertainer class, uh, or, or the celebrity class, and this belongs to an, uh, vegetable or the fruit class, right? So are the uh, fruit class, right? So th this is uh, one step ahead, right? So this is one step ahead, right? So where I have classified, right? So where I have classified these three into an one class because they are the politicians and they are men and I have classified they are the celebrities and they are men, right? So they are, they are politics, politicians and they are female, they are celebrities and they are female and uh, this is and separate class, right? So fruit class, right? So can anyone tell you there is an one problem here? Can anyone uh, identify what is that problem here? Can anyone tell what is the problem here? Can anyone tell anyone, anyone, any participant quickly because we have hardly another 10, 15 minutes time left. Setting the criteria. Uh, not, not really. Don't answer technically. You just try to answer how exactly your brain thinks. There is one problem here in classifying this. Okay, you just try to observe the most person here. From entertainment industry, no. The similar classroom is classification. Uh, sorry, sorry. See, if you see this class, we have Sonia Gandhi yeah. and we have Jailalita. Yes or no? Yes or no? Kalpana ma'am? Uh, sir, Jalita yes, was uh, also an actress. Correct. So that is the that is the good answer, right? So Jailalita was also an actress, right? So now the machine is in confusion whether Jailalita has to be pushed to the uh, you know, political class or the Jailalita has to be pushed to the celebrity class. So that is the problem that you are going to face, right? So that problem can be tackled easily through the machines. Now this question comes, right? So who is this? Indira Gandhi, right? So to which class yeah. it should go to? Right, so that is basically yeah. an unsupervised. Right, so that is basically an unsupervised and it is also called as a data cluster. Right, so now I'll try to quickly go through some of the best set of applications that are present. So this is 
and very interesting applications even there are a lot of challenges that are available in the uh, literature that identifying the number plate right so identifying the number plate so now i think uh, uh, if you want to travel through and any uh, highways uh, now they are not accepting uh, the money right so that they, they are not collecting the toll charges rather than you are supposed to use the fast tax right so rather than you are supposed to use the fast tax right so automatically your fast tax should be in a position to capture your number plate right so the number the number will be printed right so it will take hardly a minimum amount of time and it is fully full proof right so nobody can cheat that how many number of vehicles have traveled because the gate itself doesn't you know open unless otherwise the money is not paid right so you see it's such an a best application where you have eliminated uh, the human resource to the uh, great extent right so human uh, resource to the great extent and you are trying to solve the uh, providing the good set of an uh, solution right so uh, automation of the tile inspection what is basically a tile inspection so if you see uh, the vitrified tiles that are uh, that are you know that are present over the uh, floors right so you are going to see some kind of a symmetry right so if you don't find the symmetry it is not acceptable that is point number 1 point number 2 how do you really verify that there is a presence of crack in the tile that you are trying to use practically or with a human intervention it is not at all possible right so it is not at all possible right so now can you automate some intelligent algorithm such that automatically if you feed lakhs of lakhs of tiles floor tiles such that your algorithm or your machine is in a position to identify whether the tile contains any kind of a crack or no cracks right so that can be achieved through a simple image processing techniques or or, or simple pattern recognition uh, techniques right so this is an another very interesting application right so where uh, the application is in the field of forensic right so can you identify this it is human with an human intervention no absolutely it is not at all possible right so whereas it is possible through some form of an you know uh, image processing technique right so or some form of an intelligent by incorporating an intelligence algorithm right so such that it can be deciphered deciphered right so where the checks right so if you are not in a position to uh, unveil what exactly are the amount that is present in this uh, you know uh, scratched uh, uh, box right so it is basically in 10000 right so which is not practically possible through the human intervention but it is practically possible through the machine intervention right so uh, you are going to use some you know a form of an uh, intelligent algorithms by making use of uh, the image processing techniques right so you can clearly uh, come to an uh, conclusion that uh, the 10000 is present in this uh, particular uh, uh, scratched uh, place right so scratched Uh, place right so now uh, can you see here uh, can you just tell me what is this uh, can anyone tell it little you can tell you can you can answer but it is little hard to identify what exactly happening at the background right so because of the fog that is present right so because of the fog that is uh, present right so especially where do you find these kind of an applications Uh, because our capital that is delhi is worsted especially uh, in, uh, during the uh, winter season right so nowadays uh, if you see especially the winter season because of this fog right so many accidents takes place and uh, in some times the uh, flights cannot land itself because of this fog right so can you come out with an any intelligent algorithm such that is fog can be eliminated uh, yes sir kruti here Uh, sir, I think it is a fire extinguisher who is trying to uh, put water. Ah, uh, we'll see. See, your solution is correct. You are right. Are you right? Yeah, I'm yes. right. Yes, <laughs> yes, you are perfect. Right. So now, now you are you are you are you are giving a perfect answer. It's because of your intelligence, right? So because you know the domain knowledge, right? So because you know the domain knowledge. See, the fog is fully cleared, and you can clearly visualize. right so you can clearly visualize that what is happening at the back end of the uh, back end of the image so this is a great you know application that you can find uh, through the uh, intelligence now what is this this is also same see this is an aerial image that we have captured right so this is an aerial image that we have captured but it's too clumsy because 
uh, we cannot really uh, find what exactly uh, the buildings that are uh, present right so in the different uh, uh, place right so because of the uh, cloud or because of the fog right so can we eliminate this yes see can you see the difference here krutika ma'am krutika ma'am right so can you see the difference here yeah sir i can see yeah there is a lot of difference see this is much more clear right so we have fully eliminated right so we have fully eliminated the fog or the cloud region and we have arrived at this solution it is possible through the intelligence but this is practically not possible through the human intelligence right so through the human intelligence or through the human intervention right so uh, this is a star trek team right so this is a star trek team but unfortunately while capturing the image right so there was some shade which has fallen on their face and unfortunately you are not in a position uh, to see who are all the persons uh, that are present in this uh, shaded region right so now can you uh, provide any solution for this through this artificial intelligence technique or machine learning algorithm yes see now yes sir no right so that shaded part is eliminated right so that shaded part is eliminated right so that's the beauty of this uh, intelligence algorithm so biometric plates uh, uh shima madam can i go for another 10 minutes shima ma'am yes sir surely sir please continue sir okay okay so uh, this is an biometric application right so this is an biometric application what is biometric application so this is biometric is basically and which is very unique uh, that is present in our uh, uh, body right so we have fingerprint we have face we have iris we have even your walking style is an unique do you know that your walking style is also unique your voice is an unique your retina is an unique your ear ear is also an unique and your uh, you know hand wave is also an unique so they are all the biometric right so by using this biometric right so by using this biometric trait can you identify who is that person right so probably that these are the things that are extensively used uh, uh, in the field of forensic application right so in the field of you know criminology right so even other uh, other kind right so usually they'll capture fingerprint face and iris and your signature four biometrics are used in order to validate that this is the uh, person right so this is the beauty of the uh, artificial uh, intelligence right so area of uh, life sciences yes they are tremendous right so see the artificial intelligence can be used in the field of agricultural science food science Our food industries, plant science, animal science, medical science. I will. I will try to show you some of the uh, slides. See, uh, this is uh, the best. I think uh, uh, I have never ever uh, we have thought that uh, you know this kind of an harvesting can be done, right? So because because you need to you know give a kind of a support for the farmers, right? So in uh, in order to identify whether this crop is correctly ripened or not, right? So if it is not properly ripened. then what is the decision that you are supposed to take right so that's the best thing that can be done right so nowadays uh, we are talking so much of uh, you know the organic foods right so now we need to identify whether they are organic or you know uh, or they 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 comes with some sorts of an pesticides that has been sprayed right so that can be you know uh, implemented and can be taken care through some sorts of an intelligent uh, algorithm weed detection now you need to eliminate the weeds uh, in the uh, field right so whether uh, they are the actual uh, you know uh, plants right so crop uh, crop plants or they are the weeds now you need to classify whether they are uh, uh, the regular plants or they are the weed plants right so it is practically impossible for an uh, human being right so uh, to go through uh, the uh, field and try to pluck manually uh, uh, the weed plants right so what do we do we just incorporate a simple camera to the machine and whenever we try to plow uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, plow the field through this simple camera automatically it will take a decision that this is a weed plant and this is not a weed plant and try to pluck the uh, weed plant right so which saves maximum time right so which saves maximum time right so food industries yes the tremendous things are happening and especially there is a uh, you know there is a institute called cftri i think uh, you might be knowing everybody might be knowing central food technological research institute uh, which is funded by the uh, which is funded by the uh, csir right so which is funded by the csir and they are doing tremendously good especially in the uh, food industries i think yesterday there was some news 
right so such that uh, around uh, uh, 25 to 30 types of different food items are ready right so for whom for whom for the uh, people who are traveling to the space in the year 2022 have you read this in the newspaper yesterday it was a big news right so how do they do that how do they store for the maximum amount of time how do they process right so how do they check uh, the quality how do they pack right so practically it is not possible through the uh, human intervention it is possible only because of the usage of the machines and the machines which comes with the uh, intelligence right so this is the mango grading system uh, which has been uh, uh, developed by one of the uh, iit and this is uh, uh, the best uh, you know uh, 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 system that has been developed probably uh, they are in the final stages uh, which where you are going to see shortly uh, this you know this kind of a system especially for the mango grading and uh, sorting right so we'll be seeing uh, and this is exclusively based upon the uh, computer vision and the artificial intelligence uh, algorithm right so animal science yes so we need to keep track of uh, the mouse here you just try to track the mouse right so uh, it is sitting it is sitting and it is uh, walking basic posture recognition right so and if you see especially uh, the animal biometrics and if you uh, incorporate the radio color and allow this right so through the uh, yeah, through in the forest region right so you'll be getting an information that what exactly uh, these animals are trying to do especially this plays a very important role when we are trying to deal with the endangered species right so which will be in very uh, less number for example even uh, tiger if you take the, the number of tigers are also uh, minimum uh, in the country even though it is uh, the national animal right so hardly it is in the number of thousands right so but we need to keep track and preserve uh, these animal right so and there is no you know threat by an human being right so by the hunters uh, and we need to keep track of these uh, animals right so how do we do that uh, this is done through some kind of an uh, intelligence right so that is what actually i told that is wildlife uh, tracking right so try to track through some kind of an collar and where uh, suppose if they have some kind of an even you can keep track of uh, the health Uh, of that particular you know health of that particular uh, animal uh, whether they are suffering uh, from the any kind of a diseases right so such level of research is also going on through the usage of computer machines and the artificial intelligence uh, technique right so this is how actually the tracking uh, takes place right so in medical science i think uh, one of our friend uh, in the last uh, uh, presentation they asked some question on uh, the medical science right so brain tumor detection and lung cancer detection right so if i ask you a question what is the size of a cell can anyone tell what is the size of a cell cell size of a cell i i if i give you the answer size of a cell is basically a microscopic what is microscopic microscopic is something which you cannot see through your uh, naked eyes right so uh, which you cannot uh, see through your uh normalize right so then what do you need what do you need to have you need to have a microscope for that right so microscopic is so small right so uh, cell itself is so small and microscopic image is so small such that you cannot really classify whether they are the good cells or they are the bad cells so how do they do that so they do by having an scanning right so that is basically a ct scanning right so there are various ways of you know capturing the image of an any organ and they'll go for the slicing right so they actually the intelligence algorithm will take a decision right so where we are going to train that intelligent algorithm to say whether they are the good cells or the bad cells so that is where actually you can find some of the best uh, applications of artificial intelligence in the medical science right so even in x rays if you try to capture the x rays right so you can see even airline crack can be found right so even airline crack can be found uh, in the x ray images right so based on that you can take a decision right so where exactly the crack has uh, occurred in the uh, bone right so many more applications like uh, sign language understanding and driverless car so the driverless car are really playing a very vital role because uh, that is basically an autonomous car uh, i think uh, uh, in uh, today's uh, uh, session i think uh, uh, elon musk Uh, i think uh, uh, principal ma'am has uh, uh, you know uh, took the example of an uh, tesla right so elon musk where he is uh, you know putting lot of uh, funds uh, towards the develop 
development of uh, driverless cars, autonomous cars. So probably uh, in uh, a minimum number of days, uh, it will be an uh, you know real time. It's they are already existing in the uh, Western countries, but in India, uh, the scenario it's very very different. But more or less, you can really find the application of autonomous cars, right? So uh, that will be the future. News categorization, right? So news categorization automatically you need to classify. Right, so I'm interested only in the sports news. I am not bothered about the politics news or I am not bothered about the economics news. I'm interested only in the sports news. So you just delete all the other news uh, in the newspaper and try to take the news of only that are related to the sports. Under sports, I am interested only in the cricket. Under cricket, I am interested only in the Indian team news. See the different levels of classification. Can be done automatically and you can summarize because I don't have Time to read uh, the two pages or three pages of news. I am interested only in uh, just uh, just telling uh, you know uh, how exactly or, or what is the current score that is going on uh, in the match that that is taking place between India and uh, England, right? So that is how actually I know the categorization of the news takes place. Automation of attendance, right? So just you know try to avoid the time of a teacher, right? So you try to take your laptop and do like this, right? So if you do like this. Right, so to the entire class, there will be 70 students. Automatically, all the faces of the students will be captured through your laptop, and you, these faces will be matched with the, the database that are stored at the background. And you are going to say clearly whether the student is present or not. Right, so smart TVs, digital libraries, they are the uh, uh, big things. Right, so with all this, the world is uh, changing. Right, so see, we started with this evolution uh, with the Wright brothers, and we are uh, now we are in this. I know uh, this year, right? So this is what the changes that you can see. And we started with the steam engines. Now we are trying to talk about the uh, bullet trains, right? So which can run up to 350 kilometers to so 500 kilometers per hour, right? So we were talking about these kind of uh, automotive, uh, you know, machines during the previous years, but we are now we are in this, you know, uh, evolution, right? So we are talking about uh, these kind of phones, but now we are. Uh, I mean, it's all. Uh, everything can be achieved through the handheld uh, devices, right? So uh, when Charles Babbage came into uh, market, so this is what the machine that he came out with. Now we are using our Mac MacBooks, right? So these are some of the uh, best set of an examples: digital TVs and our present washing machine, your vacuum cleaner. See, in one or the other way, all these machines will incorporate some level of intelligence, right? So some level of intelligence. And you have an each and every domain that where you can work on, right? So where you can work on. So you have a tremendous scope, right? So the semiconductor devices, right? So I think everything is stored in the small pen drive, right? So in terms of gigabytes, terabytes, see the camera, the evolution of camera, right? So now see, I think uh, you have seen our first image, the evolution of human uh, being, and you see this image, right? So we have evolved to this level right so such that uh, the evolution is you know we have already reached this uh, level that where we are talking about something called uh, the robots right so we are talking something about the uh, robots right so in future uh, definitely we are not going to uh, speak anything about the evolution of man because that is uh, outdated because we have already crossed uh, that years and we should talk something about the evolution of robo right so evolution of robo and see we started like this and uh, we have achieved to this level it's all through the evolution process right so it's all through the uh, evolution uh, process right so where is AI used uh, so these are these are uh, uh, probably uh, i may share these slides to uh, shrima madam if anybody is interested definitely you can take the slides and uh, you can contact Shima Madam or uh, myself directly uh, if you need any kind of an, uh, you know, um, uh, help regarding the area that you are working on. So you don't find any area where you are not going to use artificial intelligence. Simply in a single statement, I can say this. We start from customer experience to pricing and promotion. Everywhere you are going to find the application of artificial intelligence, fraud detection risk management analysis, real-time operation management, predictive analytics, knowledge creation, R&D, supply chain management, everywhere you can find the application of artificial intelligence. Right, so healthcare, why healthcare? Because this is a very sensitive area that, you know, that we are supposed to work on because we are playing with our life, 
right so and the doctors are now doing the operations nowadays right so they'll use simply two needles right so they'll just insert it and everything is on the computer uh, screen and they'll operate the mouse and they'll do the operation surgery right so see they are playing with the human life right so they are playing with the human life and we are supposed to take the best set of and remedies such that the diagnosis or the treatment or the detection should not go wrong right so should not go wrong and the decision making is always best right so the decision making is always best when you make use of this artificial intelligence uh, technique right so so this is what the you know <clears throat> statistics uh, that has been taken directly from one of the uh, uh, source right so uh, you see where exactly india is standing right so probably uh, by another 2025 right so this is what is expected right so another 2025 days uh, uh, the penetration of artificial intelligence skills right so is so tremendous right so we are we are almost uh, surpassed uh, the developed countries like uh, germany and the israel united states no doubt they are 100% dependent on the artificial intelligence chinese are really doing good a uh, 92% and we indians right so we are extremely doing well in penetrating the artificial intelligence right so germany and israel are much uh, behind uh, our country uh, india and still we have a lot more of you know things to be done especially in the field of artificial uh, intelligence so that is why artificial intelligence is booming in the present trend so this is my uh, last slide right so where uh, uh, you are going to see the top 10 trends of artificial intelligence in 2020 right so which was uh, released by one of the uh, consortium that is called as an ai consortium right so where uh, you this these are the 10 different domains that they are uh, working on right so is considered to be the present trend right so they are considered to be the uh, present trend and uh, maybe uh, if you are very much interested uh, please uh, try to take out from your mind in your mind that you are in commerce people and you are not supposed to use artificial intelligence because you see us there is a concept called b2b that is business to business everything is online the commerce is done over the online recommendation system right so if i uh, try to purchase a phone automatically your machine will recommend to purchase your earphones if i purchase my earphones automatically your machine will recommend to purchase the phone you know uh, the uh, 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 protection protection glass right so and you see the cyber security you see the entertainment you pr and journalism yes right so there are many applications that you can find right so automated uh, business process robotics right so healthcare healthcare is doing tremendously good uh, during these years and probably down the line another 5 years you can find tremendous application in the field of uh, healthcare Right, so these are the top 10 trends that you can really find, which was been released uh, by the uh, consortium of an artificial uh, intelligence. Right, so I think uh, uh, I'll stop at this stage. Uh, maybe because uh, it's already uh, past uh, one o'clock thirty minutes, uh, so I've extended fifteen uh, minutes of extra time. I apologize the organizers for this extension for fifteen minutes because we cannot really stop at Uh, uh, abruptly uh, uh, just you know by concluding that this is what actually you can do right so we should have some kind of a logical end so that is why you know i pushed my talk for another uh, 15 minutes probably uh, we could have cut down that uh, you know introduction my introduction part so we would have saved around 3 uh, to 4 minutes of time so any questions are there i am uh, happy to take uh, questions from uh, the audience yes sir questions are there too Uh, sir, may yeah, may I request you to stop the screen share? Yes, I, I have done. Thank you, sir. Sir, it was an amazing session. Thank you for that. I request now my colleague, Dr. Manjit Sembe, to please pose the questions that are put up on the chat box to our resource person, Dr. Harish. Please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shriva Banerjee. Thank you very much. Uh, I actually have a power failure in my area, and as a result. uh there is a lot of darkness uh, uh i would uh, request i i mean i take your permission to switch off my video please yeah. thank please. you thank you sir thank you very much for that uh, very lively 
an interactive session uh, the message box is full of appreciating notes very appreciating notes for you uh, for your uh, wonderful examples that you've cited the very interactive session that you've conducted and the eye opening uh, uh, knowledge that you've shared with everybody there are two yes ma'am yes. yes, ma please go ahead yeah. So there are two questions. Uh, it is said that the greatest gift is not being afraid to question. So I'm glad the participants have also posed questions. Uh, the two questions. There's one from Basob Datta, and she has said, apart from Python, which other programming languages can be used for writing machine language programs, sir? Okay. So this is something uh, uh, which is related to the core computer science. Uh, uh related uh, question as such uh, the days are changing very very rapidly the days are changing changing very very rapidly because uh, when we used to do i think uh, uh, professor uh, shrima madam will agree with me when we were doing our graduation properly we started with the old cobol pascal uh, c c++ and then java came and then uh, perl came then our studio came and now people are talking about the python right so the only difference that i can uh, give especially if the question is from the student side i always insist not to use an any library function the first and foremost thing why you should not use library function uh, the answer is very simple because you cannot really understand what is happening at the back end so that is the fundamental uh, because you don't really understand what is the mathematics or the concept that is Uh, you know or taking place at the uh, back end so that is the fundamental uh, problem that you are going to face especially when you are using uh, the very advanced languages like python perl and r studio so that is point number 1 and point number 2 i really don't say you know not to use uh, perl or python also right so but before using implementing and all try to achieve the theoretical results try to achieve the theoretical results and just to validate try to use the python right so no doubt because python has got uh, uh, you know the tremendous set of libraries that are available in its uh, in its uh, uh, platform right so you can definitely use uh, python uh, otherwise it is uh, it is always recommended whenever you are trying to work something on uh, text especially text and text uh, languages i usually recommend to use r or the perl r studio or the perl uh, rather than the python even python can be used i am not saying uh, but the more number of features are available in the r studio and the perl than the python and python is considered to be uh, the best of today's uh, uh, trend it's only because of the reason uh, reason of its tremendous library functions that are uh, available so am i uh, uh, as my question was uh, sensible yes sir yes sir yeah yeah please um, yes i'm sh yeah yeah i'm sure basob datta must be more than satisfied with your answer sir yeah. the next question has been posed by mr rajendra deshmukh okay. and uh, besides saying that this is an excellent session uh, he has asked if you can suggest a few end user friendly free online tools which are useful in qualitative data analysis useful for comparing documents uh, useful in comparing documents yeah yes okay so here the two points uh, comes into picture so whenever uh, we are trying to talk something about the comparison of the documents uh, the first and foremost thing is uh, uh, the sudden thing that comes into our mind is to check the validity of the document whether it is plagiarized or not plagiarized that is the first thing uh, suppose if it is plagiarized how much of contents are plagiarized that is second thing and the third thing is for the documentation purposes you have many tools that are available for example i always recommend to use a tool called scribe s c r i b e a scribe is a good tool that can be used which is uh, inbuilt with the uh, grammatical uh, you know uh, tool such that it corrects your english also right so such that it corrects your english also but uh, 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 that is one tool that can be uh, used and uh, maybe in the uh, the google source if you go with uh, the uh, google source uh, which really charges a nominal charges which uh, uh, takes a very uh, nominal charges 
you can make use of the google translators whenever you are trying to work on the cross uh, platforms for example from one language to another uh, language right whereas uh, with respect to the uh, document comparison and finding the plagiarism content uh, there are a lot of proprietary issues that comes into uh, more or less uh, it's so unfortunate that no open source uh, open source tools that are available in order to have uh, the comparison of the uh, documents but whereas you can have in comparison with respect to the programming uh, that you are going to do but we don't have an the exact document content uh, which is considered to be an open source or free of cost to have in comparison between one document to another document uh, there are many online uh, online tools that are going to get popped up but uh, unfortunately those tools are meant only to handle one or two pages or maximum of 10 pages but not more than that if you want to compare between more than 10 to 15 pages it will ask for uh, the charges thank you very much sir uh, there are more questions which are on the whatsapp chat and which uh, mrs manisha tandil would be taking up that's all from the chat box thank you very much sir once again and over to you dr shima banerji and mrs Sh uh, manisha thank you thank you, thank you ma'am uh, may i request manisha madam to kindly pose the questions that are put up on chat box uh, whatsapp group for sir yeah. Okay, okay. Shreema ma'am, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for uh, such an informative uh, session on AI applications in education. Sir, there is one question in uh, uh, Zoom chat box which was sent to me privately that how digital library is powered by AI? Please explain broadly. Okay, so uh, it's a good question, right? So digital library there are uh, first and foremost things is we need to be very clear uh, uh, to define what is basically a digital library whether we are handling the books right so only the books right so that is a very simple task that we can do right so but handling the content of the books is a very challenging task yeah. right so handling the content of the books is, is a very challenging task and how in for both the application in handling the books how it can be done i think more or less most of the colleges you know, our, you know uh, uh, most of the colleges are fully automated, especially in digitizing uh, the, mm. the uh, books uh, that are kept in the rack. Whenever the books go out, uh, usually a simple pointer will be kept and uh, the pointer will get either incremented or decremented. So that's the intelligence, it's all the intelligence that is required, right? So especially in order to uh, you know, automate uh, the management of the uh, books. I think uh, we have done in the fundamental uh, database uh, courses also we have taught our students right so to come out with this kind of an application but the challenge is the second one how to manage the content of the uh, book right so that's really a very challenging task uh, because you need to really have lot of lot of uh, the uh, supporting tools for that right so supporting tools for that and uh, translators for that and if you want to really uh, make a, a kind of an uh, cross-platform uh, language translation, you need to have uh, the intermediate uh, translators which sits in between the one type of a language and the another type of a language and transfer from one language to another uh, language. But there is a one field called natural language processing. I think uh, you might have you know, know already uh, about this tool, right? So they are really uh, uh, doing uh, good. Uh, this uh, natural language processing researchers are doing good. Uh, especially with this digital content and if if students are or the participants are very much interested i advise you to look for the website by c i i l c double i l that is center for indian uh, center uh, center for central central institute for indian languages central institute for indian languages which is funded by the uh, central government which is funded by the central government and they are doing tremendous job, right? So, and many uh, tools are available, especially for this kind of uh, application. Okay. Was my answer was sensible? Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, uh, 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 the uh, second question is from Roshni. Uh, she is asking that what uh, what are the career options in the AI field uh, in the India? 
uh, in India, just now I showed you a slide that there is a penetration of 80% of artificial intelligence in India. Right. And you need not to worry, right? So you please, you know, uh, try to delete from your mind that you are not really a computer science student to take up the subject of, uh, subject of artificial intelligence. I'll see, uh, a very simple question is, uh, how many of you are, are how many of us learned using the Facebook account through some instructor? Don't you think that's an intelligence? See, politicians are using uh, Facebook. We, uh, yes, the highly educated people are using uh, you know, Facebook. Right, so who has thought this? Nobody has thought this. Right, so do you need any kind of specialization? Nobody knows, needs any kind of specialization. But only thing is, you should be interested in that. Right, okay. so there is a tremendous scope, irrespective of uh, the, the, uh, you know, the participant, irrespective of whatever the domain that they are working on, Right, so they should simply make up mind that you know they wanted to get into this. Uh, it, it's as simple as you know jumping into the water. When once they are jump, you know, jumped into the water, it's it's very easy to uh, swim. And the computer science uh, subject is one subject, right? So which is considered to be a very trivial or a very simple subject. You don't need any kind of an expert to teach. Uh, I mean, even I am a teacher. Sorry if I hurt anybody's uh, sentiment because many professors. Well known renowned uh, professors are there. Uh, I, this comment is uh, you just you need not to have and something tremendous expertise to teach computer science or to teach, uh, you know, uh, or to learn the computer science. But only thing is your effort. We, being and teachers, professors, we are guiding you people or we are guiding the participants. This is what the way if you go to this, see, people, uh, student is good in Python today. And tomorrow you may be very good in any other new language. Who knows? Right. So there is absolutely a tremendous scope. You try to keep your mind open and try to work from this, from that perspective, you can find very good opportunities in the field of artificial intelligence. Okay, sir. The uh, sir, next question is from K Mahesha. Um, how AI is important for building entrepreneurs? Okay, entrepreneurs. <coughs> See, uh, for entrepreneurs, who are entrepreneurs basically? Entrepreneurs are the one who are going to start their initiatives, right? So who are going to start their initiatives as a new, right? So they need to have some kind of a survey for that. It is basically a market survey, right? So even many times the entrepreneurs have failed, even though they are very good in financial status. Why is that? It's because of the poor analysis of the market, right? So it's because of the poor analysis of the market, right? So for example, see, I have 10 lakh rupees in my hand today, right? So I have solid cash of 10 lakh rupees today in my hand. And if I go to, uh, you know, Kia, Kia showroom, the, that, that's the new car that has come. And the waiting period is six months. Waiting period is six months. I have solid 10 lakh rupees. And I am ready to pay another 1 lakh rupees extra. The market price is 10 lakh, but I am paying 11 lakh. But still I am not getting the car uh, of Kia. Uh, why that they have not manufactured that? Because the reason is very simple. They have analyzed the market and they have analyzed the threat. Right? So they have analyzed who could be the competition, who could be the competitor. Suppose if the Tata comes with a new car tomorrow, right? so then there will be a disaster for the Kia Motors. They cannot just simply manufacture lakhs of lakhs of cars and uh, you know and store in the uh, stockyard. No, that is not the way to do the business. They do the, they are supposed to do the analysis, right? So, being an entrepreneur, you should think vertically as well as you think you should think horizontally, right? So, all possible cases, the best cases, the average cases, and the worst cases to take a decision that this is where actually they can float their business. For that, artificial intelligence is very much needed. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, next question is, uh, I think it is already answered. Uh, by when we can expect the utilization of machine learning to uh, the routine work of the teacher? I think you mentioned about the Baiju's classes. They are, they are starting, they are utilizing this uh, AI applications. Yes, so, madam. It's, see, in one or the other way, directly or indirectly, 
whether we are interested or not interested right so see whether we are interested or not interested whether directly or indirectly right so whether it is a compulsion from your management or not a compulsion from your management in one or the other way we are already into the machine learning or the artificial machine learning. okay right uh, so the, the days are not far uh, okay. the robo will come to the classroom and the, the robo will speak <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Manisha, madam. I think uh, the questions are done, Manisha, ma'am. Ah, uh, one one last question. Uh, is coding and artificial intelligence uh, are interrelated? No, definitely no. Okay. Definitely no. See, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, if I quantitate you, right? So if I really quantify that particular uh, question, mm. right? So I'll give a weightage for the logic. logic and the reasoning i'll give nine marks out of 10 and coding i'll give only one mark because if i am good my my kid who is going to class 10 is good in c programming or c++ programming even she or he can do right so but creating an idea is very important so i'll give weightage of nine marks out of 10 for the you know logic and one mark for only coding definitely they are not interrelated okay sir okay sir thank you so much uh, for uh, solving uh, queries of the participants uh, over over to you shrima ma'am thank you thank you manisha madam uh, it's time to propose a vote of thanks to harish sir i request my colleague dr karuna sinha to propose a vote of thanks to sir over to you karuna ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you shrima ma'am very good afternoon professor harish sir very good afternoon madam very good afternoon sir and uh, good afternoon to my colleagues and their participants also um professor harish sir you have put me in a dilemma you know why because i don't know where from to start and <laughs> how to say or propose vote of thanks to you because there was so much which you have covered and a person no a person like me who is not from science background so many things have become clear to me today so i was just wondering where from to start but i'll definitely start uh, we all know that machines are influencing nearly every facet of our life and help improve efficiencies and augment our human capabilities uh, artificial intelligence is so intertwined in all that we do it's hard to imagine living life without it in future and artificial intelligence shall be the future of all complex decision making in every sphere and every field of life in future i think this is uh, this was the essence of your presentation where uh, you made it uh, very clear in a very lucid manner sir that artificial intelligence is not uh, an open field uh, it uh, it is an open field and not restricted to only computers Uh, what is intelligence what is artificial intelligence how is human brain different than a machine and then a caption was there that artificial intelligence is not alone at home that was something very beautiful and with lots of uh, interaction discussion you made it very clear to us that how artificial intelligence can be merged into different fields also so then there was uh the evolution of man you took us on a journey where we could see the evolution of man and how human slowly started using the natural intelligence then evolution of civilization came where you depicted the work of natural intelligence of human beings yes of course the evolution of science kind of innovations which have taken uh, from uh, you know time to time and where the humans again incorporated their human intelligence and gave us lots of innovations then yes slowly and slowly the increase in use of technology was there then also how pattern data sets help our brains to retrieve the stored information and in the same sense in the same way you said that machines also retrieve the information so uh, towards the end there was the application of artificial intelligence the best areas were discussed for example number plate identification automation of trial forensic application life sciences agriculture medical science yes 
uh, you made everything so clear to us. And that was, you said that towards the end, with all uh, the application of artificial intelligence in these fields, in these areas, we are where we are right now. The world has changed and is going to change because we are going to see more applications in more domains of life. And yes, the last you said again, this is the new evolution of man, where we can see that we cannot survive without the machines and without the artificial intelligence and how artificial intelligence is blooming now. So I'm sure that with uh, the kind of presentation which you had, the kind of knowledge which you have given to the participants, I'll just say that you have um, sowed the seed uh, of reflection into their minds that how artificial intelligence can be used effectively in their respective domains. Thank you so much, sir, for a wonderful, lightning and insightful session. This opportunity uh, on behalf of Gujarat Research Society's Hansra Jeevandas College of Education, our principal, Dr. Anita Swami, entire GC family, and of course the participants to extend a heartfelt gratitude to you, sir, for accepting our invitation and giving us such a wonderful session. Thank you so much once again, sir. Thank, thank you. you thank you very much. Thank Over you to very you, Shima, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Karuna, ma'am. Uh, so from Siri to self-driving cars, artificial intelligence is progressing rapidly. While science fiction often portrays artificial intelligence as robots with human-like characteristics, Artificial intelligence can encompass anything from Google search algorithms to IBM's Watson to autonomous weapons. Today's journey was all about that. We have reached to the end of the session. Here, I would like to quote the words stated by Max Tegmark, president of Future of Life Institute. Everything we love about civilization is a product of intelligence. So amplifying our human intelligence with artificial intelligence has the potential of helping civilization flourish like never before. As long as we manage to keep the technology beneficial. Yes. So these are the famous words with which as sir has taken us on a journey today, we have learned more about artificial intelligence. So on behalf of Gujarat Research Society's Hansraj Jivandas College of Education, entire AJCE family, our participants, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to both our resource person, Dr. Harish and Dr. Rupa, and also to all our participants to be here and to really make this webinar a grand success. Thank you once again to each and everyone. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you, you to much. all the participants. Thank you. Thank uh, participants, you the link is, will be shared in your WhatsApp group. Kindly fill the feedback form. And within next 15 working days, you will be receiving your certificates on the registered email that you have sent. Thank you very much. Uh, Manisha, madam, over to you. May I request you to kindly end the session? Yes, ma'am. I will be. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Thank you.